three o'clock games on open all mics. Chance, chance, chance! And it's a goal! Oh, what a goal! Oh! All the action from all the biggest games. Oh, it's a second goal! Oh! This is Open All Mics from Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. So welcome to Open All Mics. Let's get straight to Willie Miller at Tannadice. It's Dundee United against St Mirren. Willie, we're hearing from the manager there. It's been a tough couple of weeks for him. What sort of team has he picked this afternoon? Your thoughts on this game today? Well, he's got to be concerned about uh, the defensive uh, capabilities of his side, surely after losing uh, those 11 goals in two games. It's not good enough, and he'll know that, and he will be worrying about it. You know, it's a question that a manager will parry away, but uh, it'll be very concerning. And uh, he'll be looking for a much stronger uh, performance this afternoon. To that end, he makes uh, three changes um, to his team. In comes Eriksson and goal, Fletcher and Levitt, and out goes uh, Berengitti, uh, Graham and Kujo. Um, the starting lineup in goal, Eriksson. Smith, Edwards, Mulgrew and uh, Besham as a back four. Midfield three, Hearts, Levitt and McGrath. And up top, Watt, Fletcher and Middleton. For the visitors, um, Stephen Robinson, he makes uh, a couple of changes. Out goes uh, Shaughnessy and Kilty. In comes Gallagher and O'Hara. Uh, his starting lineup, Carson in goal. Back three of Fraser, Gallagher and Dunn, a midfield. Five of Strain, Abacus, Erehon, O'Hara and Tate and up top Main and Ayunga. So it's perfect conditions for a game of football here this afternoon and let's hope we can give you more of the same here, Kenny. Yeah, it's been a great start today. Thank you very much indeed to Willie Miller to keep us updated in all the action there at Tanner Dyston. D United against St Mirren. Let's then cross to Alan Preston. He is watching St Johnson against Aberdeen. Again there, Alan, two sides very much in need of not just a good performance, but a good result this afternoon. Yeah, they certainly need a good result, Kenny. And unfortunately, we're going to have a 10-minute delay here. Someone's taken ill in one of the stands, so um, we're having a 10-minute delay here at McDermott Park. Um, hopefully everything's OK. We'll just run through the teams. Firstly, Aberdeen, they made one change. Kennedy is out, Coulson's in. So it'll be Roos the goals are back for a Richardson, Stewart, Scales and Coulson. Ramadani, Bazawin, McCrory, Clarkson and Hayes, Umioski up front. For St Johnston, it's two changes out, go Montgomery and McPherson, in come Brown and Phillips, so they'll go Matthews in the goals, back three, McGowan, Mitchell and Considine, right, Halberg, Phillips and Brown, with Carey, Bear and Murphy, and the referee for this one is Craig Napier, but you're right, Kenny, both sides need a victory, um, Aberdeen started the season well, but the wheels fell off last week at home, and St Johnston took a heavy defeat uh, last weekend, but had a really good result at Mullerwell the week before, so... It's a, it's a game here that both sides really need to win but as I said earlier we have a 10 minute delay here at McDermott Park OK thank you to Alan Press and hopefully everything's OK with the person there that's taken ill in the crowd there so important for another two sides this afternoon that's the game in Dingle oh. John Robertson is there for us it's yes we're going to have a chance oh it's a big chance it's a big chance uh, for um, St Mirren they've been on the front foot right from the start back as it was he should have done much better it's a good cross in from the right hand side he's totally free some seven yards out he's got the goal gaping he's got to get it on target puts it by the post big big chance got a begging yeah I mean they made a dreadful start to both halves didn't they actually threw at Tynecastle uh, Dundee United on Sunday so worrying signs in the early stages there at Tandarice let's then get to John Robertson he's in Dingwall Ross County against Kilmarnock the two sides John that prop up the tables looking at County uh, from last season it took them 10 games to get their first victory they've started quite well in their games but nothing to show for it you there John? A few technical issues this afternoon. We're Hello. also waiting to hear from Derek Ferguson. Are you with us, John? Now? Yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, they've had plenty of plaudits, but no points at the moment. But they have, by all accounts, been playing very well. They've made two changes today. Um, so they line up with Laidlaw, Johnson, Baldwin, Yakovetti, Purrington. Uh, they then have Concola, Callahan, and Danda with Sims, Huwali, and Oleg Bay up front. The subs are uh, Eastwood, Edward Zamora, um, Samuels, Loturi, Watson, Harmon. Tilson, Payton and Jordan White. Kelly have made three changes in their lineup with uh, Walker and Goals uh, and a back four of Abelusi. Um, they've got Ash Taylor, 
uh, Wright and Mayo, and then they have Polworth, Power, McKin uh, McEnroy and McKenzie, and Shaw playing just behind Laverty on the bench for them is Woods, Alston, Armstrong, Sanders, Murray, Waters, Donnelly, Sutona and Cameron. And today's referee is David Monroe. OK, thank you to John Roberts. We'll hear from Derek Ferguson shortly. He's watching Motherwell against Livingston. Let's dip into the Championship. Stuart Ketterwell is at Capolo. Morton against Indy. Should be a good game there this afternoon, Stuart. Yeah, Kenny, it's, uh, it's one that I'm looking forward to. Off the back of Patrick Thistle's performance last night, you would think there'd be some onus on Dundee to go and get the three points here. Um, but it's actually Morton that have started the game pretty positive. Katongo said I had a breakaway, uh, and just as I speak just now, there's a, a delivery just about to come into the into the Dundee box. So it's it, it's a tough place to come. I think Dundee will understand that, but I'm expecting a, a pretty lively encounter here. It's got off to a good start. Yeah, what a start uh, last night to the weekend for Partick Thistle winning 4-1 at home to Inverness Cali. So that game was live on the BBC Scotland channel. Let's stay in the Championship. Our broth against Queen's Park watch this afternoon by Ali Defoy. Hi, Ali. Hi, uh, gosh, it's a gorgeous sunny afternoon here in our both brand spanking new media setup, which I have to say is brilliant. Perfect for a header, which we might uh, might end up, end up doing. Last two times these sides met was in the league here at Gayfield, and that was back in January 2018 with a 2-1 win for the Lifties. There's a fun wee nugget for you now. So Scott Stewart, who's our both number 12, is the son of Owen Coyle's assistant, Sandy Scott. So looking forward to see how that pans out. Uh, are both going into today's match off the back of a loss literally just down the road at Dens and they have two points just out of a possible nine so far. The visitors full of confidence you'd think after a great 3-2 win over Partick Thistle last weekend. Former Arbroath player who's captaining Queen's Park today. He scored five goals for the Spiders this season. Um, that's Simon Murray, he's our captain or their captain, should I say. And since you've been talking about referees, I thought it might be worth mentioning that today Steve Crickland is taking charge of his first championship match this season as the referee. So great buzz about the place. Players uh, were playing FIFA with the kids ahead of the match, as was Dick Campbell, which I'm sure you would expect. So loads of fun and plenty of fun going on here. But I can say both teams are battling it out at the moment. No two side, no, none of the two sides are stronger than the other, but plenty to see. It's going to be a great game. Well, let's hope the referee has a good afternoon there. An early goal in the championship race. The Rovers are 1-0 up away to Hamilton Aggies in League 1 Peterhead 1, Queen of the South 0 and into League 2, an early goal for Annan at home to Stirling Albion, they lead by 1 goal to 0 just discussing there Tom with, with Willie about that game at Tandardise an early chance uh, we saw for St Mirren Jack Ross got off to such a, a great start with the game at home to Altmar. We were in the studio that night, there was a real buzz, it was a great performance, then the real disappointment losing at home uh, to Livingston, it opened with a, a draw down at Kilmarnock, then the heavy defeat at Tyne Castle last weekend. It, it is a real test for him, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is, because you know we were singing his praises after after the first uh, the first European leg and they're 1-0 up at home and Tanadice is alive and things have gone pear-shaped since then. It, it looks like he's constructed a, a squad which has, which has goals in it, but it's, it's not, that has not transpired so far. Three goals in five games. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure what to make of Dundee United. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what to make of Jack, Jack Ross at Dundee United. Dundee United are a curious club. I've spoken a lot on this programme about uh, about the finances yep. of the club, the way uh, Mark Ogren has really pushed the boat out. I think about £8 million losses, operating losses over the last three seasons, uh, wages to turnover, 130-something percent. He has really gone for it in, ter in terms of constructing this squad. Um, he needs some return. They need to get a whole lot better to yep. look at that top four finish. Uh, let's then get to Fair Park. Motherwell against Livingston. There for us is Derek Ferguson. You get the, the team news, Derek. Yes, Kenny. I have a few technical problems here, i.e., that is Chip Young causing havoc <laughs> as usual. Uh, yeah, I'll give you Motherwell uh, first of all. They make one change from that brilliant win against Aberdeen. That change is Lamy comes in for McGabby. So we go with Kelly and goals, a back four of McGinn, Lamy, and Solholm, and O'Donnell. Then it's Slattery, Goss, Cornelius, and 
Spittle across that midfield with Shields and Van Veen up top. On the bench they go with Oxborough, Mugabe, Maguire, Effort, McKinsey, Johnson, Morris, Tierney and Mahan. For Livingston were there on change from their uh, win against Hibs. So that's George and goals in the back four of Devlin, Fitzwater, Obelai and Montano. Midfield three of Omenga, Omenga, sorry, Holt and Kelly with Shinny and Pittman uh, supporting Nubly up top and it looks as if yeah, Pittman, yeah, Pittman's making his 310th appearance uh, here this afternoon at Fur Park, which is a record for, for Livingston. He's been what a servant he has, he's been absolutely brilliant. On the bench for Livingston, Konovalov, Longridge, Baham, Baham Abula, I think it is, uh, Concalvis, Brandon Mullen, Basindu, Kinkar, Penrice, and the referee is Nick Walsh. Thank you to Derek. So Leanne is on VAR duty as ever for us this afternoon. What, what games take your eye this afternoon? <laughs> All of them, especially <laughs> after the start that we've had this <laughs> afternoon, Kenny. Yeah. Uh, I sit here in fear that there's going to be more controversial decisions. Um, all games pretty quiet just now. We'd need to say there's a, a flashpoint of a yellow card up at, at Willie's game, certainly at Tanadice. He can maybe give us a wee bit more on that as to what just happened. But Dundee United actually, for a spell there, looked comfortable in the ball, Kenny. I know we're speaking about how they're um, perhaps under a bit of pressure. And, and Jack Ross, it's a huge afternoon, similarly. Um, it's the same probably for Stephen Robinson, you know, can he continue the, the form that they had last week, a good three points, but you need to back that up with a bit of consistency, so that's probably the game just now that's certainly jumping out at me. And, the, you know, Ross, Ross County versus Killy. Um, I think uh, it's... Desperate for points, Tom, aren't they, de des Desperate for points. I mean, we, th we have an idea of, of, of um, Malky Mackay doing a great job, but Ross County have lost three games in a row, albeit Celtic and Hearts are two of the three. If you look at the tail end of last season, they're now a run out of now on a run of seven defeats in eight league games, and the other one was a draw. Yeah, concerning times. Another chance here for you, Willie Miller. Oh, it's a bit of a magnificent strike from Bacchus again, uh, from outside the box. I'm not sure was it Stephen Fletcher. I'm not 100% sure who took it in the head, but he's he stopped a certain goal because that one was uh, going to be flying into the back of the net. They have started, they have created the better chances, uh, the visitors, so none have been uh, the better side. Yes, Dundee United have had um, a bit of possession, they haven't created uh, too many opportunities in the visitors' box though. Um, and the answer to Leanne's question, having a clue who got booked, uh, Leanne, the referee flashed it in front of about three uh, Tangerine jerseys, I think it was maybe... Uh, the, 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 the fullback, full uh, B Hitch, yeah. uh, number uh, 16. How you pronounce that? B High or B Hitch? Uh, uh, whatever, whatever his name is. Yeah, whatever his name is. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to go with <laughs> you, Leanne, and if you're wrong, then I'm just going <laughs> to say no. We're all in it together. Not often I'm wrong again. Every person for themselves, Leanne. <laughs> well, if it's okay, if it's okay ask the, the Dundee United the, a commentator, and he said B Hitch. So yeah, B -Hitch. I think I have said B Hitch on, uh, <laughs> on radio, Willie, but. Leanne is normally right on these occasions. No, I'm going to go with you if, if that's what they've done. The United commentary team are saying, then we'll, we'll go with them. And ah. believe me, that can change during the season. So I've been <laughs> through it all sure. before. Alan, any signs of play getting underway there at McDermott? Yeah, teams are now out, Kenny, thankfully. And as I said, hopefully the fans are okay. Yeah. Um, they told us it would be a 10 minute delay to get the fan out the stadium. And, and it looks like he's, the person's gone away now. So we're just about to get underway, just waiting on the officials coming out. But well, teams are out. I'm just. I'm saying it might be underway, the teams are out but they've got about three or four balls each just kicking it about, maybe they're trying to keep warm or keep loose, because there is no officials at the moment, uh, Jim Goodwin's now on the pitch talking to his players, still waiting on the officials, Callum Davidson's out, he's looking up to the stand to find out what's going on, so we're still not underway yet here at McDermott Park. Speaking of officials Alan, I think that's the first time we've really debated a referee in performance this season, Willie Collum at Easter Road this afternoon, so many big big calls that he made. And wrong some of them as well. I, th I think the Lundstrom one's very, very harsh indeed. I didn't see the penalty in the first half because I was driving up to McDermott. Yep. Uh, but the Morelos one's a red card all day long. Um, so he's, in my opinion, he's got one out of two correct there. But I, as I said, I've not seen the penalty, so I can't comment on it. That's moment, maybe why we need that VAR in as soon as possible, Alan, do you think? <laughs> Well, you never know. You know if, if, if officials get influenced by crowds, Willie, as we've seen during COVID, where there was no crowds and there was more away wins than yes. normal. Yes, I know. Kenny, Alan, Kenny, I'll get you, pulling your leg a little bit, Alan. Kenny, do you know what sticks in my mind? Leanne said it uh, right at the start. She says, rightly or wrongly, uh, Willie Collum. Willie Collum is going to be centre of attention. And that happens all too often for me. Do, 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 you, do you mean with Willie Collum specifically, Derek? Yeah, yeah. And I was debating it, I was, well, 
kind of arguing with Chick about it, you know, in any game I cover. You know, and uh, it just seems he can't wait to get the cards out. And I, I go back to a game here uh, a few weeks ago, St Johnson scored a last-minute winner, and, you know, and, uh, and May takes his top off, and, yeah, and it's a, we know it's a bookable, bookable offence, but, you know, he walks with him for about 20, 30 yards until he gets his top on, then dramatically produces a card and that. And it's like... You know, and it's easy, I know it's easy to just give referee stick, but for me, you know, that's, that's stuck in my mind right away when Leanne said that, you know, he's going to be centre of attention. It shouldn't be like that. You know, you're just a good referee when you don't notice him and you're watching a great game of football. I think at times, Derek, what Willie Collum does is other referees are, are probably more hesitant at times where they would probably rather not make a decision and have people debate whether they should have given that that made that big call or not whereas I think Willie tries to be assertive he's rash. and he makes the call he's very decisive and he's very, yeah. in the moment he, he calls it as he sees it straight away and I don't think it maybe in certain moments he could even take 20 30 seconds and yeah. maybe take but, on board these officials and, and perhaps listen at times have a bit of a discussion slow the game down but he's, he's very reactive and I think he makes those calls and at times he, he falls foul to them himself excuse the pun yeah, just running through the scores again, that early goal for Wraith Rovers away to Hamilton Ackies in the Championship. Underway, Kenny, sorry, at McDermott Park. Thanks, Alan. Good to hear that. So a late start there at McDermott Park. Alan there watching uh, the home side in need of points, but they've got a dreadful... Uh, look at, looking at Aberdeen's uh, record, they have there's one win away from home in the league. I was looking at this earlier, in their last 19, the bad news is... For St Johnson that came at McDermott Park. So interesting to see what happens here in that game. And is it three this wins in, uh, Willie will tell me better than anyone. Three wins in 15. Yeah. For Jim for Goodwin. Jim. Yeah, three and 15, Alan. Yeah. I mean, he had a great League Cup campaign, didn't he, Willie? I mean, they looked league, very, very yeah. good. They live in new signings. They seem to be gelling well, but they were dreadful last weekend. Yeah, that was league games, uh, Alan. Three yeah. and 15 league games. Yeah. Um, they were, but hey, take nothing away from Motherwell. I thought Motherwell were excellent yeah. and, uh, you, you know, were. Uh, were physical, were aggressive, but played some stunning football as well and uh, had, you know, three goals. Could have been many more goals here too. So it was a major setback for Jim Goodwin. I think it took him by surprise. I know it certainly took the chairman by surprise. <laughs> um, uh, and when you get a result like that, then you need a reaction and they certainly need that reaction today. What sort of reaction is Malcolm Mackay getting John Robertson near Ross County against Kilmarnock? It's very quiet here, to, to be honest. First 17 minutes, all we've had really... Uh, was Kazim Olagbe just cutting in and a, 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 he scuffed his shot, easy, easy save uh, here. But it's just they're just cancelling each other out at the moment. You know, it's it's one of these games. That I wouldn't say it's nervous or you know they're both bottom bottom end of the table and it's a, a nervous situation. They just think they're just cancelling each other out. They're both trying to get the ball down. They're both trying to get it forward quickly. But they're just uh, just defenders are really uh, both defences are oh, well on top at the moment. Yeah, chance. Uh, a, ch a chance at McDermott Park, it's a good ball in by Bazawa and it's Miofsky, he just completely mistimes his jump, it's a header, round about the penalty spot and he misses the ball completely. Yeah, just look yeah, at the action going here, yeah, it's going at Leanne. Uh, he does well, Leanne, he gets yeah, in front of the centre half. He does, he does, he, he just gets it all wrong. Is there a slight nudge maybe just behind him, it puts him off. Um, certainly good movement because he gets across the, the St Johnston defender, but just couldn't get the contact on it. It must be strange for Andrew Considine all the years at Aberdeen playing against him today. Ah, it's a strange one, isn't it? What's that reaction? Is he any at all from the away fans? No, on? that's a brilliant, I've got to say, a brilliant Aberdeen support down over 3,000 here at McDermott Park. But no, there's been no reaction really. I think everyone's just wanted the game to kick off, you know. What was it like Goal! for you? Yep. Ali? Goal at Gayfield! Uh, it was Thomas um, who managed to get the ball to Simon Murray. He took a shot, hit the keeper's leg. It came back out and then knocked it, looked like off the back of Ricky Little, the Arbroath player. And it's a goal for Queen's Park. So Arbroath nil, Queen's Park one here at Gayfield. Thank you to Ali. Also in the Championship, Hamilton Ackies nil, Wraith Rovers one into League One. We saw an early goal there for Peterhead, 1 0 up against Queen of the South. That's the only goal in League One. And just a 1 in League Two, and in 1, Stirling nil into the English top flight. The lunchtime kickoff at finish, Spurs 1, Wolves nil. It's Crystal Palace 1, Aston Villa 1, Everton nil, Nottingham Forest nil, Fulham 1. Brentford nil and Leicester City nil, Southampton nil. The 5.30 kickoff is Bournemouth against Arsenal. Derek, just speaking about Andy Constein, what was it like for yourself when you went back to your former club? Did you 
feel you had a point to prove? Did you get? Did you? Did it spur you on in these games? Hey there, Derek. No, we've got problems, technical problems again this afternoon. What, what was it? I wouldn't ask you, will they? Of course, it never, <laughs> it never happened for you, Alan. It must have happened that for was, you. Yeah, it did. It's, it's strange because you're playing against, well, Andrew will know most, if not all, the Aberdeen players. It's very strange coming back. You walk in and you see people that you know that are in the in the background on the staff. You know, even the doorman coming in, the kit man. Everyone welcomes you, but then it's down to business and you want to try and win the game. The, the club sometimes let you go, as they did with Andrew, and, and he'll want a point to prove today. He'll want to try and put Aberdeen to the sword if he can. He's been known to score a goal or two as well, um, Alan. <laughs> I think that would give him a little bit of a smile on his face at the end of the game if he could do that. But no, it's, l listen... He, he's a total professional, true professional, Andrew Considine. We'll just He's now with another club, yeah, he would be disappointed the way things finished at uh, Aberdeen, you know, man and, and boy at Aberdeen really coming through the development programme, but uh, he's now moved on and uh, everything, 100%, will be given to St. Johnson. What are uh, we seeing from the D United? A couple of early chances for the wayside there at Tanner Ice, Willie? Yeah, not a lot from United, to be perfectly honest. Uh, it's been a poor start to the game from them. It's uh, all been about St Mirren so far. They've had the bulk of possession. They've had a couple of opportunities uh, themselves. And really, um, United have not done anything. They're definitely second best. Um, as the ball comes across and the goalkeeper is nowhere. Um, you know, but it runs out for... A goal kick. No, it, it, it's been all, all, all about uh, St Mirren um, so far, and I think Jack Ross will be a, a worried man. That question was put to him whether he'd be yeah. worried before the game. I think he'll be worried with the start that uh, his team's put up so far in this one. Yeah, you just feel the need to win this afternoon in terms of bouncing back from two hugely disappointing results, and also they've got aspirations, serious aspirations of top four again this season. I think you're back with us, Derek Ferguson. Yes, can you hear me, Kenny? Got you now, yeah, a few technical issues this afternoon. So how's, how's the early stages going there at uh, Fir Park? Uh, nothing be between the sides whatsoever. No any real clear-cut chances. Uh, keepers have, you know, they've been unemployed at the moment, nothing to do. We've got 20 minutes on the clock and, you know, it's a bit of a battle, if I've been honest, uh, certainly in that midfield. Maybe Motherwell edging it a little bit, uh, but Two, two teams that should be confident after fantastic wins but uh, they look so evenly matched at the moment so I think uh, don't well going by what I've, I've witnessed so far I don't think there'll be a lot of goals here uh, this afternoon Kenny and you were I heard you talking about do you have a point to prove when you go back to yes, your old club or oh, yes. big, big time yeah. Kenny because there's nothing worse than getting rejected and uh, when I was uh, I wouldn't say rejected but ejected from uh, <laughs> Rangers <laughs> I certainly had a point to prove and I scored when I went back there yeah. you know, how did hearts. that feel? Well, uh, do you know it was, a kinda, it was a strange feeling but I didn't want to like can I get too emotional but see inside you know I was uh, it was how do I put this I need to be really careful because Graham was <laughs> Graham <laughs> Suris was the manager but it's just a, it's a lovely feeling you know <laughs> uh, but you know I had a job to do and, and you know, when I was at Hearts, but uh, it was always, it's always a nice feel. Oh, I think we've lost him again there. <laughs> yeah, he's just dropped oh. off. I'm, I'm just looking at the chance as well for Motherwell. I think it's Lammy at the back post there, Kenny. Comes from a set piece, delivered deep, and it's a diving header. I actually think he could have done better, tried to put it back across goal, but it goes just wide of the post. He has um, chance for Aberdeen there. Yeah, yeah and it's uh, Richardson into the byline, he flips it to about 10, 12 <laughs> yards out. And then comes Bazawan and um, Mayowski. They both trying yeah, an overhead yeah. kick at the same it's time. Bazawan that does it and gets you <laughs> just knocks it wide. What was uh, it like for yourself, Leanne, playing against Glasgow City? It was strange. It was strange last season because the inevitable happened that we were drawn against them for the first game of the, se the new season, um, which was was always going to happen. It's always tough, I think, especially when you leave in good terms. Maybe a bit different to Derek in, in terms of yeah. his description of being ejected. Um, it wasn't quite like that, but I think uh, it's the guys mentioned him back, people that you know at the club, the, the people Ooh, that run the club, the owners. What there's looking one at? for you uh, up at County here, Leanne, we talk yeah, about penalty penalties. Shout, yeah, a wee, a wee nibble, it might, might have caught him. Not uh, a great deal, like it? Looks like a coming together, but we'll hopefully oh, get a closer angle. Oh, here's a chance for Kamara, Ollie Shaw! Oh, straight at the keeper. Yeah, hopefully it'll come back up again, John, but I've seen the one you were talking ah, about. Just a wee, they had a wee nibble there, the full-back male had a wee nibble at Sims. Uh, there was a big shout from the home fans, but uh, as I say... Referee not interested. Referee not interested. <laughs> Mr Monroe not interested. He's, unlike Mr Colm, he took a deep breath and said no. <laughs> that is the best way, no doubt about that. Very interesting to hear... Uh, 
the reaction uh, on sports scene this evening when they've had a chance to really look at these incidents closely this afternoon. Three big calls from the referee at Easter Road earlier on it finished. Hibs 2, Rangers 2, uh, the early goal from the penalty spot, James Tavernier on 45, Martin Boyle lies on 51, then Tom Lawrence, a bullet header on 58 minutes, Rangers 2-1 up, then Lundstrom sent off in 66, Morelos after coming on as a sub sent off in 75, and Josh Campbell, a fantastic finish for him, right at the death on 93 minutes, so two apiece there uh, this afternoon and our lunchtime kickoff at Easter Road, just looking through the other scores this afternoon so far, uh, no other goals in the top flight matches our guys are there, full coverage of course on open all mics we heard from Ali Defoy, an early goal for Queen's Park, 1-0 up away to our broth, also a very early goal for Wraith Rovers, 1-0 up away at Hamilton Atties, the other two games there are goalless into League One. Falkert have gone ahead away to FC Edinburgh. Chance. Peter Head, oh, flags yep. up. Ball's in the back of the net. It's a great ball in from Hayes. And it's Mioscu with a diving header, but the flag goes up straight away. I don't know, it might be tight, but you know, linesman yeah. has better view than me. Yeah, we're going to see it again, Alan. Seems positive though from Aberdeen last couple of minutes. Yeah, couple really of good ball in the foot. box. Uh, it's tight, I'm going to say straight off from what I'm seeing, he's onside, if I'm being honest. Yeah, Kenny, you're going to look at it as well there, I'm, I'm trying to use Dan the edge of the 18 as a, as a line in, in relation to the feet. Um, my, my initial instinct will be like yours that it's on, but it's very, very tight. So yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, and the assistant referee will certainly have a better view than what we've got looking along the line, but it's a great bit of movement from Miofsky, playing off the shoulder, good finish, but the officials are not having it. No, they're not having that one at all. Uh, some, just some signing news that's been some speculation over the past couple of days, Alan. Uh, Stevie Hamill confirming that he, he has spoken to Robert Snodgrass. He, he's a free agent now after leaving Luton. What sort of signing do you uh, think he will class, be? Absolute yeah. class. Great for the changing room and also wonderful ability. And, Did you have him as a youngster at Livy, Alan? Yeah, as yeah. a young boy at Livingston. He was brilliant. Absolutely. Rob will know him as well. I think Robo stuck him out on loan actually, he's still in Albion as a young kid. Mm -hmm. um, but he was his great ability and a wealth of experience, Scotland International. If Mullerwell could get him, it would be some signing for him, it really would. But is this, what about the boy Stuart McKinsey that's came on loan from Leeds? From Leeds, he's back, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. another good sign. On the bench oh, today. This, this has to be a yellow card for Andrew Considine, surely. But Zawin knocks it by him and Andrew just steps across him. The referee's taking his time. Maybe the right thing to do. It should be a yellow card, in my opinion. But we'll soon see. He might just let him off with a warning. But he certainly stepped right across him. He knew he was never catching Basawan. From what we've seen today, Alan, it could go either way. <laughs> 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 Edge your seat stuff here. Yeah. He's going to just uh, we're just going to get a look word. at it now. Uh, he, he uses his body, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. He's let him off. He's let him off with it. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a block and, and you know what that probably sums up a lot of the discussions that we had earlier Alan in relation to the penalty that was given for Rangers where it was two hands round, almost round the waist no real great contact but just wrong side of the, of the player and it gives the referee the decision to make whereas Considine there is defensively on the right side of the player he just uses his body as a wall and blocks it we see it when the ball's running out for corners and throw-ins yeah. and whatnot where the player players like Andy Considine get the benefit of the doubt you know, whereas at Easter Road today, the defender didn't get the, the benefit of the doubt the penalty was given. Rob, are your thoughts on Robert Snodgrass, if Motherwell could get him signed up? Yeah, so Alan says he's, he's a quality player. His composure, his ability to see a pass um, and keep the ball. Um, set plays we all know as well. Incredible. And Alan's right, he's a 16-year-old. Robert's um, intensity in training, for want of a better description. Uh, we needed to get him out and get him, get him playing and toughening him up a wee bit, he came back and he was he just kicked on from there. As soon as he came back he realised what he had in, in terms of the platform Livingston could give him and he just got better and better and, uh, and say it was uh, I remember going to Dundee one night we played uh, James McPake as a striker emergency striker wow. but the three the three behind them were Graham Dorans, Robert Snodgrass and Wes Houlihan. 
oh. uh, who are all very, very good players. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you just imagine around the club, around the dressing room, Liana, they could get them signed out. It would be huge, wouldn't it? It'd be brilliant, I think. And you can already see the response that, that Stevie Hamill's got from the players. They really are buying into what he's asking them to do. I think Robert Snodgrass would be another one. He, he's been about the game for long enough. Lots of good experiences, both domestically and internationally. I just think his story in general, Robert Snodgrass, where he came from, the East End of Glasgow, the career that he built himself, I think he's still firmly got two feet on the ground. He's never been above his station um, and he seems like a real good character. I think just for him to come in and, and lend his experience, especially with Stevie Hamill, looking to bring through some of the younger players now, give them a chance, um, it would be brilliant for Motherwell. And I think the fans would really respond well to it if the club could make that sort of statement in terms of a signing. Yeah, he confirmed yesterday Stevie Hamill he had been speaking with Robert Snodgrass. Let's get round the grounds then, what we half an hour or so, and although we are behind uh, at McDermott Park, yeah, so well behind there. Uh, kicking off with yourself then, Willie yeah. Miller at Tannadice. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the game's kind of uh, disintegrated a little bit in terms of uh, any chances or any decent play in and around the, the penalty boxes. I, I would say that United have got a bit more of a grip and possession, um, but neither side in the last 10, 15 minutes or so have created anything. Um, it's, it's a very even game now. I think in terms of chances, uh, St Martin have, better, have had a better opportunities, two good um, chances, and uh, Dundee United are still waiting for their oh, first. Oh, what a ball that is. Clarkson for Aberdeen. Oh, wow. He just feeds it in. What a wonderful pass. Miofsky's on the end of it, just can't get in there, but what a pass that is. That's an absolute delight, Alan, isn't it? You, do, you just don't see too many passes like that now in games. Everything generally goes sideways to the byline and back across the box. But to lace it like that between the defence is just brilliant. It's something that De Bruyne does down the road and you, we wax lyrical about it when we see it in our game. You know, that has to be highlighted, a pass like that. And maybe, at times it, maybe at times it's a striker, Alan, that doesn't give you those types of movements, but certainly the way Miofsky moves and plays off the shoulder, he always does look to, to kind of just jink in behind and he makes your mind up. As a midfielder, if you see the run, you would try and play it more often than not, whereas it's maybe just a lot of teams we watch now that are a bit slower in the build-up. Yeah. The Dawn's well on top there, Alan. They are the better side, St Johnson haven't caused any trouble at all, Aberdeen for the ball in the net, they've had the overhead kick with Bissawin as well and then that opportunity there. They look very, very athletic Aberdeen, a lot of pace and power about them, St Johnson just struggling a little bit to get in the game. What about at Fair Park then, Derek Ferguson, Motherwell against Livingston? Yeah, it's all a bit too slow, a bit too safe for my liking, Kenny. You know, I'm, I was trying to be kind to both sides in, in terms of saying it was pretty even, but uh, they've got to show a little bit more. And there's a big crowd in here, a big home support certainly uh, for Motherwell, and I think they'll be looking for a little bit more from the, from the guys out there. Uh, but as I say, uh, the way you were talking about the game, they are just describing it, you know, a lot of side... P side foot passes you know and get forward a little bit more show a little bit more endeavour but uh, at the moment it's just all too <laughs> too one pace and too slow Kenny we just need a little bit more Easter Road thunder here don't we you were, say, you were saying there was a lot yes. to live up to after the early game well Flat, they're not, li they're not living up to it rotten, I heard. First, first half was, was, was poor enough yeah it was Alan but second half wow yeah, I mean that, that was, was oh that was that was uh, that was outstanding second half. Everything you would want: incidents, drama, goals, really good goals. Oh wow! Ahara uh, should Someone have done. Turns, yeah. Sorry, Ahara should have done much better. That great play from uh, St. Man, well worked, and Ahara uh, finds himself in the penalty box on his right foot. He goes at it so leisurely. He just kind of a strolls onto it instead of maybe just getting there and giving it the laces. He tries to just slip it past the United goalkeeper. But another chance for uh, St Mern and a chance in my book should have been taken. What a goal that would have been, Willie. I, I'm not sure, I, I just caught the tail end of it, but whoever laces the ball with the left foot in the diag, then the knockdown for the header, and as you say, Ahar has got to do better. They're under a fair bit of pressure, aren't they, Willie? We're just watching the pictures come in here. I mean, St Mern are well on top. Yeah, I, I mean, the, 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 they've had a bit of the game the last 10, 15 minutes, but nothing. You know that's going to excite their fans and on that occasion they've been caught in the break and you know it was a quick fire break from St Mirren and Ahara I just don't know why he doesn't get onto that you know and just pounce on it and really just you know strike it with a lot of venom he doesn't do that he just leans back and kind of a oh, throws his leg one. out here's a high it. one here this has to be a yellow card for Considine Aberdeen are wanting a red some of them he goes right through Bazawa and then he catches him in the stomach area Ah, he's got the, the shirt up, Alan certainly looks in a lot of pain. Uh, yellow card for Andrew. 
you just wonder if this could be <laughs> Andy Consign coming up against his old team. It's quite early on, isn't it, now to find yourself in the book? Yeah, it's more, it, is, it is coming together right enough. I don't know. It's an awkward one, but Bazavin certainly doesn't look comfortable. Come on, Robert, right. bring us some action. We need something. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, uh, uh, my game's going pretty much the same way as Fergie's is at the moment. Lots of possession. Um, to be fair, Derek McInnes has gone. He's not on the touchline here because Kilmarnock have been quite sloppy. Uh, they've been quite, they've been okay from sort of defence at the midfield, but they've been very sloppy uh, midfield going forward. They've only created that one half chance. All his shot burst at the box and struck it um, straight at uh, Ross Laidlaw. County the same. They've, they've been a little bit tidier in possession. They've had three half chances, all very, very comfortable saves for Sam Walker. Um, but there's, uh, again, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, the Easter Road second half fireworks are going to uh, come <laughs> make their um, way up to Dingwall at yeah, some stage. I don't think we're convinced. Let's go into the Championship then. Stuart Kettlewell is at Capelo. Morton against Indy. How are things there, Stuart? Yeah, Kenny, it's a, it's a little bit better news here than what the guys are uh, obviously providing from other grounds. It's been a really competitive game. Both sides going at it, hammer and tong. Um, a, a really good chance for either side. The, the standout player, Kenny, has been uh, Robbie Crawford for Morton, he just signed a couple of days ago and, and he's been the outstanding player, he's had a really good chance, brought out a good save from the goalkeeper and out with that we've had a, a Paul McMullen effort that's come off the crossbar as well, so very evenly matched, and you have a corner at the minute, they're having their little spell but just previous to that it, it was Morton that were on top, but we're still goalless here at Capelo. Well Ali Defoy has delivered a goal this afternoon, a broth nil, Queen's Park won, any sign of further scoring there Ali? Yeah, do you know what? There's been plenty of chances, but just not quite getting into the back of the net. I would say Queen's Park are probably the stronger in the opening 15 minutes. Then it was end to end, so great if you were a neutral. Um, our both shot got cleared. They couldn't really make anything of their corner. Uh, and our both keeper has really been kept on his toes. There was a quick turnaround and a shot there from Jack Thompson. A uh, strong save from Derek Gaston, who really has been, been worked hard by the Queen's Park uh, front line. It's not... Yeah... I don't think Dick Campbell is going to be too happy with our growth at the moment. I think they could be really pushing it a lot more. They're just, they're letting, they're letting Queen's Park too much into their box and they're just sort of sitting back. The defence needs to come out a wee bit, I think. Um, they're, they're, letting, they're letting Queen's Park kind of go all over them. There's a shot now for 21. Oh, great save from Derek Gaston again. Shot from Grant Savory. Uh, and another chance there just went over the bar. But yeah, still... Uh, Ali, is it, Ali, are Queen's Park playing with the wind by any chance? Queen's Park are, uh, yes they are. are, are <laughs> that, might be why, that might mean why they're slightly on top because when you go to Gayfield it tends to be the wind blows right down the park uh, and so there's, there's normally an advantage for, for yeah, the team. Yeah, our both are playing into a strong wind at the moment. <laughs> For sure. You I might have to change the second half, changes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. I don't, do you know what? I've got, I think Queen's Park, I watched them last weekend and I thought they did tremendously well against Partick Thistle. So you never know. You never know. But yeah, we nearly got a header in the media box there. The ball came right over, but the guys weren't, weren't up for header in it. So yeah, I'll try and get my head on it next time. Well, at least you've got a goal there. Let's run through the scores for you. 2-2 so in the lunchtime kickoff. Uh, Hibs 2, Rangers 2 at Easter Road. No goals so far in the top flight in the second this, half this is when your heart when your job becomes very hard Kenny it's uh, you're trying to yes. keep I can see you're pedalling furiously to try and keep the momentum up here <laughs> yeah I, I, and also praying that all the lines stay intact this week as well I can tell you that's been a problem if we got four nil alls end of, end, end, oh end. listen don't 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 rule it out four I mean, nil now we want listen this is Scottish football. Sometimes it, 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 we have to wait for it to catch fire. Yes. But it nearly always catches fire. Kenny's just so. the defensive centre mid right now, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, 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 somebody yeah, else to yeah. be creative. It's He's thinking, a, come on. That one positionally, <laughs> and I have to say. <laughs> uh, a broth nil, Queen's Park <laughs> one, Cove Rangers nil, Air nil, Hamilton nil, Raid one, Morton nil, Dundee nil, into League one, Airdrie nil, Alloa nil, SC Edinburgh nil, Falkirk one, Kelty Hearts nil, Dunfermline nil, Montrose one, Clyde nil. Right, this could now, be a red yes. card then, Leon. If this now see, there you go. Yeah, if you look at the Lundstrom tackle, look at this tackle from Callahan, yeah, and all he's done absolutely. is just wipe him out. This is Bang a red card yep. all day long. Like for and like. he's only given him a yellow. Yep, like for like. He's made no attempt, John, honestly. He's for. made no attempt at to play eight. the ball. He's gone high, he's caught him in the, in the thigh, and that's and that's where managers will crack up because uh, I'm telling you right now that. 
you know, David Munro was, was quick at yellow card. You can see that right now. That Tony Docker, he's talked to the fourth official. He's made no attempt to play the ball. That's violent conduct all day, day long, and that, and he gets a yellow. To be fair, that and that is a debate though. That is a yellow for me. Yeah, but it's a similar challenge. I get it. I get. But what I'm saying is, see, see when he made no attempt to play the ball. I actually think that gets a lot worse. Yeah, and I think a wee trip. Yeah, but when he wiped them out like that. That was like a scissor challenge. If you look, if you look in relation, John, where the ball actually goes, there it goes one way, and the player almost goes slightly wider than where the ball is, and Callahan actually goes out his way. To get yeah, across the player, so he's player. not even tracking directly he's behind not, him. He's I know not what trying you're to play the ball. He's just yep. completely. He knows. He knows that Al Lucy is not to pass them, and he's just deliberately wiped them out. I don't care where that is on the no, path. That's a sore one. He looks if he's struggling is, as well. For me, it's a red, it's a red yeah. card. Well, what, what the many contentious things from Easter Road is that Lundstrom goes for doing what he did, but uh, elsewhere in the game there was a very, very similar one where the roles were reversed. Where the Rangers player got brought down and there was, there was no yeah, yeah, I saw, yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah, and yeah, the I mean, Doyle Hayes. Doyle Hayes, yeah. That's right, Doyle Hayes, you're right. In Robert. the first half and didn't and, get it. And then and I, I didn't see what was, 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 was a worse challenge. Arguably, yeah. arguably was a worse challenge. And so, I mean, how can you look at two very, very similar? And this is what Rangers fans will be going potting about. You look but, at those two incidents. But, they're very, very similar. Same, it's a red Tom, for one and This one is just a player. It's Callahan. It's not, you know, he's not a dirty player. He's competitive. But he's just wiped him out. He's made no attempt to play the ball whatsoever. I'm going to hope that I get another replay of that one, John, because I actually think the contact, the way Albios is limping just now, looks to me as if it's maybe been above, here you the, talk above about the foot, above Here's the another ankle. one for you, lad, because it looks like La the county player's gone down. Lafferty now has been yellow carded for, allegedly, throwing an elbow. <laughs> so... There you go, you can, you can take it. Is this the fireworks that we've been waiting for? <laughs> is it? No, not so much fireworks, but... Uh, well, I'll tell you, it's going to be interesting after the games. I saw Derek McInnes do an interview last week and he said he, he felt at times his career has been a bit prickly with the media. Uh, you don't say, Derek. And he said he's going to try and change that. So it'll be interesting to see what he's like after this game with some of the, the decisions that are Kinkola's made there. Cole's not happy with Lafferty. Yeah, no no elbow, well. John. No elbow, no. John, for me. But he's used his body. He's glanced at the player as well before he jumps. He knows what he's yeah. doing, Lafferty, but certainly yeah, there's no raise of an he's elbow. Barged, he's just barged into him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. body checked him. There's a shot for St. Johnson. It's Phillips on his left foot. Good save by the keeper. Well, he look, goalie looks good. That the end of Lewis at Aberdeen. Yeah, uh, he does look good, sorry. I'm Intrigued in this game, you, you know, and I'll come back to that. He looks uh, pretty agile, but you know, you're talking, and obviously, I haven't seen the game at uh, Easter Road, but you're talking about contact in the box. You need to watch the contact in the box here. They're just grappling each other down to the ground, and nothing has been given. That's the point um, Tom was making, Willie. He was saying, to me, going on what Willie Collum gave the penalty for this afternoon, Tom's point oh, was. Oh, it's a chance, oh, Curtis Main! He finishes it! Curtis wow. Main in on the right hand side, he keeps his head, he drills it low past the goalkeeper to give oh. St Murn the lead. What a chance for That's St it. Johnston, really good play by Murphy to the byline, he rolls it back to about seven yards to Theo Bear, and he completely swings his left foot and misses the ball completely. Not a natural finisher, that won't be the last time you hear that. That's a good finish from Main, Willie. The through ball, it just takes a L nick, I think it wrong foots. Yep. Um, Mulgrew was it that was was marking? Yep. Uh, he's still got a lot to do though. Composes himself well. Probably a goal that Curtis May needs actually. Yeah, and I always think, you know, back in the day, you might have been looking round expecting your full back to have tucked in a little bit if you're a centre back, but of course that doesn't happen anymore. So, you know, he gets the freedom down the right hand side and he keeps his composure and he just slips it into the back of the net. No, it's actually a really good goal. I'm seeing it again here because his movement's brilliant. Main looks as if he's going to go across the face. He makes the movement to go across the face, then he just checks his run, and that's where he gets the, the, the bit of luck in terms of the Ooh. deflection. Oh, but it's a great striker. He so does some amount of space. He creates some space. He does, he does, and it's just that we half change of direction. Kenny, he dips Liam. the shoulder. Yeah. The half, half shout for a penalty. Liam Pover got to the ball, looked in front of a county player, went down. Uh, a couple of Kilmarnock players appealed for that. I don't, again, I don't think it was. It didn't seem to be much. Yeah, the angle's it, but, not great here, John. But yeah. I'll look out for it if I get another. 
glimpse at it. I was giving you the scores uh, from League One. Airdrie have gone one 0 up at home to Alloa and Kuna the South have equalised away to Peterhead and into League Two. And in one Stirling nil. Bonnie Rose nil. They made a great start as well. Albion Rovers one. East Fife nil. Four for nil. Elgin City two. Stranraer one. And Stenhouse Muir nil. Dumbarton one. Willie, can I can I ask you to gauge the current uh, mood of the Dundee United supporters? <laughs> it's not been particularly good throughout this first half. <laughs> to be perfectly honest and I, I wouldn't expect anything else um, they haven't been happy because their team haven't really performed in the first half and there's no doubt that St Martin have been the better side and they're bossing the game so the mood of the United supporters as you can imagine Tom is not a very good pretty aggressive and angry mood at this moment in time which yeah. you would expect Jack, yeah. Jack Ross yeah. was pretty prickly pre-match with Brian actually Tom last, uh, last Sunday at uh, Tynecastle yeah, well, look, he's a man. Who, I know it's ridiculously early, but given what's happened the last two games in particular, um, no wonder he is. Uh, he's feeling the heat. Uh, he's heel feeling the heat professionally, and he's feeling <coughs> the heat in terms of the fans. And we can hear it from Willie there. This is this is a very very difficult time uh, in Scottish football terms. Um, outside of the the top three, this is this is a kind of expensive enough team. There's a lot, of, a lot of money and wages going, in, going into this team every week. So, this is, this is not how it was supposed to be for Jack Ross. In English top flight, the other kickoff, Spurs 1, Wolves 0, that's a full time. Crystal Palace 1, Aston Villa 1, Everton 0, Nottingham Forest 0, Fulham 2, it's now Brentford 1, Leicester City 0, Southampton 0. The tea time kickoff is Bournemouth at home to Arsenal. We're approaching half time here. We haven't heard much from you in the past few minutes, Derek Ferguson. Anything to report there at Fir Park? No, it's extremely poor, Kenny, to be honest with you. You know, I've, uh, you know, you try to give it the benefit of the doubt certainly the first 20 minutes but uh you know they've got to they've got to demand more from each other you know and they've, they've got players out there i mean we've, talk, we've been talking about big Nubly, uh how good a start he's had to the season he's, he's he's not been in the game so the players have got to get give him the ammunition get the ball to him you know you look at van veen up top you've got shield spittle guys that can create but they're not getting the ball to them and i don't know it, is it a case of, like John says, they're just cancelling each other out, but uh, I think something's got to change. We're, we're coming up, what, we've only got about 30 seconds to half time, thankfully. Uh, so hopefully the managers can rejig things and the players can get their act together to get into the second half. Robert, what are your thoughts on Nubly? Michael Stewart was saying last week he's surprised a bigger club hasn't come in. He thought he'd do a good job for Hearts. Do you think he's at that level yet? Sorry, for who? For Nubly. Nubly at Livingston? Yeah. Yeah, he'd, he played obviously come up and loan Arbroath, it was excellent for Arbroath, he's got great skill for a big lad, I mean, he's about six foot four, but mm -hmm. he's got really fast feet, great touch, vision, he probably didn't score enough goals yeah. uh, for Arbroath uh, in that respect, and Just that's why the other teams are looking at. Sorry to interrupt, it's half time here at Gayfield, Arbroath nil, Queen's Park one. Half time here as well, Kenny, thankfully, Motherwell nil, Lovey nil. <laughs> 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 that about sums it up, doesn't it? <laughs> go, go get a, go get a coffee. Well, we're about to test your uh, theory here, Tom, because we've got a corner at long last. Oh, uh, right, we'll, take that. we'll take that, and we just want to see what the situation is with grappling, uh, shirt pulling, and holding in the box. Uh, Rob, remember it was highlighted at the start of the season, and Bobby yeah. Madden gave three at McDermott Park in one forty-five minute spell. I'm yeah. sure it was. Uh, well, it always happens when you first bring it out. Uh, and see, see the Hibs Rangers games. I saw the first half where I left. There's an incident about five minutes before he gives the penalty, Willie Collum, where Rangers go down the right, there's a cross put in, and it's clear just before it gets to Collach, and uh, Rocky Bashiri's pulling all over him, and Cholak goes to the referee and actually complains about it. Uh, and I don't know if that was still in Willie's mind when the, the penalty incident happened, but it was, it was Bashiri was all over him, hauling him, pulling him, just as you do, as we say, it's a contact sport. A ball we put in the box, he's not wanting the big striker to bully him. I just wonder if that was in Willie Collum's uh, mind. And I'm just saying that because the half time whistle's just gone here. And like Fergie, I'm delighted that this has come to a close. <laughs> My see, goodness. The is, see this see, when, the, see when we bring stuff. VAR in, Tom. See when VAR comes yeah. in, it's still down to human error. Well, you look at yeah. Cucurella last week in the Chelsea yes. game, yeah. getting his hair pulled. It's well, a red card all day long, and they end up scoring a goal with it. So still down to a referee sitting looking at this at, and saying that's a foul or it's not a foul. Well, you look at the you look at the penalty that was given against Rangers in Europe, um, yeah, you know, and uh, it was never a penalty. No, you know, and 
that's a that's a, a half time at Dundee. That's a referee guys. who's getting getting the decision right in real time, but the VAR changed his mind to an incorrect decision. So I mean, so we're saying, oh, VAR will VAR will probably uh, uh, remove a lot of mistakes, but I could it could introduce a lot of mistakes. Well, that, as well. I, that, that, when we had that discussion, Tom said there'd be mayhem in Scotland. That was me because every single person we spoke to, we looked at the, the the laws of the game. It was an incorrect decision made by a very experienced official it, it was, in that game. It was nothing the Rangers deserve to lose. Like it's nothing to do with Rangers. Yeah. It's the fact that if that happened a game here, there would be mayhem. Well, it w would be, and everyone want to know who's the VAR. Yes. Uh, and it was two mistakes in one. Penalty was a mistake, and the yellow card was a mistake. So the VAR, who was an experienced Bundesliga official, changes the mind of the referee who got it right to begin with. Yes. I mean, you're right. If that happens here, well, it will happen here, probably. The only thing oh. with VAR is it's just giving the opportunity to the referee to see it again. If it's still human error and they still come to the same conclusion, again, rightly or wrongly, they're at least having the, the benefit of doubt where <laughs> we get to see it over and over again just now be funny to our decision. I'm, I'm going to have a hazard a guess that Willie Collum will be the first to get called yep. over to have a look at it and stick with his decision. Because <laughs> you were saying, Alan, it's very, very, very few. Rarely. Yeah, very, very, very few. rarely. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. so half time at Capelo, Kenny, nil nil. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, that's a popular scoreline this afternoon, I'm afraid to say. But we have seen a goal, uh, at, we saw a goal at Tannis, with a good finish from Curtis Main St. Mern. I think deserved to be in front up there. You're a bit behind, Alan. What, you've got another what, 10 minutes or so you've to go? You've got 10 minutes to go, yeah. And St. John's have come into it, they've had a couple of chances. Steel Bear should have done better with a cut back from Murphy, and then Phillips had a shot well saved by Rusa. Grown into the game, St. Johnston. Aberdeen still look the most likely. They've got real pace in the, the wider areas with Hayes one side, Bazaar on the other. Um, and I really like the striker. He looks very good, Willie. You'll be delighted with Mioski. Yeah, so we will uh, just go round the grounds. We will, he, Alan will keep us updated. Anything happening, a delayed start there in McDermott Park. Goalless uh, between St. Johnson and Aberdeen in that game. But we'll go round the grounds and get some half-time reports for you right here on BBC Radio Scotland. Every goal. What a goal! Every game. That is right out of the top drawer. Every kick of the ball. Oh, it's a terrific finish. This is Sports Sound. It's absolutely tremendous. From BBC Radio Scotland. Right, so the half-time scores, Dundee United nil, St Mirren 1, Motherwell nil, Livingston nil, Ross County nil, Kilmarnock nil, and Frank. as Alan said, 10 minutes still to go there uh, Hello, towards Frank. a break. Nil-nil, uh, nil, St Johnson against Aberdeen into the Championship, are both nil, Queen's Park 1, Cove Rangers nil, Air United nil, Hamilton Ackies nil, Wraith Rovers 1, Morton nil, Dundee nil. In League 1, half-time scores, Airdrie 1, Alloa nil, SC Edinburgh nil, Falkirk one, Kelty Hearts nil, Dunfermline nil, Montrose one, Clyde nil, Peterhead one, Queen of the South two, and in League two, Annan one, Stirling nil, Bonnery Groves nil, Albion Rovers one, East Fife nil, Forfar nil, Elgin City two, Stranraer one, and Stenhouse Muir nil. Dumbarton won and into the English top flight. A uh, result from earlier on. Spurs won, Wolves nil. These are all now half time scores. Crystal Palace won, Aston Villa won, Everton nil, Nottingham Forest nil, Fulham two, Brentford one, Leicester City nil, Southampton nil. The tea time kickoff there is Bournemouth against Arsenal. So let's then get to Tanner Ice and get a half time report from Willie Miller and D United. Uh, trailing at home to St Mirren Willie and just listening to your report coming in they've had so many chances the wayside they deserve to be in front at the moment yeah can you hear me okay yeah, yeah got you now yeah. I dropped off a wee bit there I was trying to get the half time uh, uh, news into you but yeah yeah. I mean I, I think uh, St Mirren have been by far the better side United are really struggling really struggling to get any momentum going at all and have hardly created an opportunity. I suppose the best chance came from uh, Glenn Middleton, who had a straight from a free kick in the centre that was easily uh, about 25 yards out, that was easily touched over the bar. But uh, the home side um, have been disappointing and the fans are not happy. But, uh, you know, Stephen Robinson can be more than pleased with how his uh, team have, uh, ha have went about this first 45. Uh, Bacchus, for me, has been the man. He's had a couple of opportunities. A header, in my opinion, he should have finished cross in from the right hand side he makes a good run to the near post he's unmarked totally 
and all he has to do is uh, put it in between the white sticks and he manages somehow to slot it by the, 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 the near post. Um, he's then had a ball in, it's a magnificent ball in, I think it's Stephen Fletcher that actually gets his head uh, onto it as he manages to clear it off the line. If he hadn't been there then there's no doubt it would have ended up in the back of the net. O'Hara then has a magnificent opportunity, he's just so lazy in his run up to it, he really has got to pounce on it and finish to give uh, St Mern the lead but the lead did come just before oh. half time and it was uh, Curtis Main that, uh, that, that managed to uh, show composure, uh, good movement as well, running off the shoulder of Mulgrew, finding the space for a younger uh, to, to, to play the pass. It did take a lot of deflection, but Main got it under control, steadied himself and just slotted it into the back of the net to give uh, St Mirren that lead. And it's a lead that's well deserved here at, uh, at, at uh, uh, Tannadice. And uh, it's one that the home fans are not very pleased with at all. But Stephen Robinson, I'm sure, will be a very, very happy manager. Yeah, big 45 minutes ahead for Jack Ross and his players and I've got a feeling this won't take long. Derek Ferguson, Motherwell against Livingston, not a lot to say in this one. No, no scoring, unfortunately here at Fir Park, Kenny, you know, and I'm thinking where do I start? The see it takes two to tangle, but both Motherwell and Livy, I don't think they even want to dance with each other. <laughs> uh, the game, it's been it's been one pace, it's been slow, too deliberate in the build-up, uh, both goalkeepers have been spectators for the most part. Chances, well, for the home side, their best effort was a uh, a Blair Spittle drive from 20 yards going just past, that was in 27 minutes for Livy, one effort of note, and that was Sean Kelly, it was a free kick from about 25 yards, fizzing just past the right hand post in 37 minutes things can only get better Kenny in the second half Motherwell now, Livingston now bit of action there Alan was it? yeah it's a free kick Kenny free kick. Oh, listen we'll take it <laughs> <laughs> free, we'll take free kicks, throw ins, whatever you want Alan yeah, just that was a decent just, effort yeah. there. It was, um, it's a yellow card for Halpern. <laughs> just pulls him back. Are you, having, are you having your lunch? He's, <laughs> he's, having, lunch. he's having his half time pie. Yeah, it's not even half time. Having my, <laughs> <laughs> having my lunch. I didn't expect you to come uh, to me. Listen, <laughs> listen we're, we're, we're in a bad way here. We need action. We don't need you eating your lunch. Let's just hope there's not a goal, Alan, or we're in trouble. There's no, it's in the middle of the party, and I, I timed my sandwich. Don't worry. <laughs> right, let's get to John Roberts and Ross County against Kilmarnock. John, again, not much of a game there. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's, it's a bit like Fergie's. Both teams are, are cancelling each other out. They're, what you, on a positive aspect, they're very, very well organised, both sides defensively. They're not giving the opposition much chance uh, getting forward. They're working extremely hard off the ball. Uh, Oleg Bay, uh, Huala and Johnson have all had tame efforts towards the Kamarat goal, which Sam Walker's dealt with easily enough. Oli Shaw had a shot that, that stung the hands of, uh, of uh, Laidlaw at best. But the real big talking point here today was, I say, it was a very, very crude challenge by Ross Callahan. Uh, Zalabusi broke away. Uh, he just chopped them down. We had no attempt off the ball. As we saw Easter Road earlier on, it, it saw a straight red for John Lundstrom. Here, uh, David Munro decided it was a yellow card. Uh, the Kilmarnock bench was incensed. 30 seconds later, Kyle Lafferty picked up a booking for what you know it looked like an elbow but it wasn't as with as Leanne and, yourself and Tom have said it was just a, a robust challenge but he saw and that that's that was about it that was the only time in the whole game so far that Tempers got a wee bit afraid there was a bit more zip about the, the passing and the tackles um, but uh, thankfully David Monroe brought the half to an end uh, very quickly and it can only be better second half Thank you to John Robertson. Let's dip into the championship and head to Capolo Morton against Dundee. There for us is Stuart Kettlewell. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. It's still nil-nil here at Capolo between Morton and Dundee, but the first half is, has been pretty decent, really competitive. Morton, given their, uh, their own good account, um, much expected Dundee maybe to dominate this one, but it has been very even. It's been a game of three chances. The first of those came in seven minutes, and it was Robbie Crawford, the new signing, who broke up the play drove into the penalty area and brought a really good save out, a young goalkeeper, Harry Sharp. Uh, moments later, it, the, the chance went the other way this time, and it was Josh Mulligan that set up Paul McMillan about 18 yards out and really composed side-footed effort, and it crashed off the underside of the bar and away to safety. Uh, and just moments before half-time, 45 minutes, the best chance of the game, and it fell to Jazz Cabia. A through ball over the top of the, the Dundee back line, put him clean through in goal, Harry Sharp was just off his line and Cabia tried to be cute and lob him but actually missed the target. Like I say, Kenny, pretty decent game of football here. I've been really impressed by Morton and their setup. 
Um, and I think that probably has to get a little bit better for Dundee if they're looking to take those three points away and regain that top spot at the top of the division. Uh, it remains here at Capelo, Morton nil, Dundee nil. Well, Ali Defoy has seen a goal at Gayfield, a broth against Queen's Park, Ali. It did, and do you know what? We've actually all been looking around it, around the, the Arbroath Media's laptop, and we have to say, it was a lovely pass from Thomas. The keeper got to it, however, it was not back, and it ended up deflecting off Thomas O'Brien. Earlier we said it was Ricky Little, but uh, as I say, after going around the laptop, we've worked out, uh, due to the captain's armband, that it was actually uh, an own goal from the captain to open the scoring, to put the visitors in front. 20 minutes in, it's sort of end-to-end. -end. Both sides missing great opportunities to capitalise on strong runs. Arbroath, as we've said, been playing into the wind for the first half with their keeper really being kept on his toes a quick turnaround from Jack Thomas and a strong save from Derek Gaston who really has been uh, put to work should I say this afternoon earning his pennies 36 minutes in it was a fantastic save again from Derek Gaston a clearance off the line before they are both um, uh, for our both sorry after Queen's Park fired it over but as we said the visitors will be playing into the wind for the second half we'll she, we shall see if they can keep up their strong battling start and I get what you're saying about the Lichties playing into the elements but when it comes to battling for every ball and putting their bodies on the line I definitely say Owen Coyle will be the happier of the two managers going into the second half but it's half time here at Gayfield our both nil Queen's Park won we have to get results. The league table doesn't lie. Some people would say they've introduced the relegation just to get Fort William out of the league. The jeopardy now exists. I've never actually seen them win a league game. This is going to be the first victory. Can Britain's worst football team be saved from relegation? This will be the greatest escape in history. In history. Fight at the Fort, Tuesday night at 10 on the BBC Scotland Channel and iPlayer. You're listening to Sports Sound on BBC Radio Scotland. We brought you an absolute cracker and a lunchtime kick-off. Hibs 2, Rangers 2, the wayside reduced to nine men and they, they were made to pay late, late on. 93rd minute, a great goal from Josh Campbell there with the equaliser we heard from both managers. We heard from Jack Ross before kick-off this afternoon. His side are behind at home to St Mirren. That's the only goal in the three o'clock kick-offs in the top flight. They're still playing at McDermott Park. A late start there, probably a couple of minutes to go uh, for Alan Preston in that game. I've given you the, the half-time scores from the Championship and around Scotland this afternoon. Michael Stewart is back with us. He's on sports scene this evening. Have you had a chance of another look at these big incidents from Easter Road at lunchtime? Uh, yeah, the... the I mean, it's, it's not as if it's going to be revolutionary because I think everybody's seen the, the, the replays themselves. But um, the one that I would perhaps, you know, shift slightly on is the um, the penalty incident for Hibs in the first half where um, Tavernier's on top of Bashiri, mm -hmm. Paul Hanlon's on top of him. I, I thought perhaps that Paul Hanlon had fouled Tavernier before Tavernier pulled Rocky Bashiri's jersey. Um, I mean, if you're being, and this is where it becomes, it's impossible for referees to do these things in a split, you know, mm -hmm. second. But if you're looking at it chronologically, James Tavernier probably starts pulling t uh, Bashiri's jersey before Paul Hanlon jumps on his shoulders. I can completely understand how the referee's not given it because yeah. everything I've just described there. But if you were looking at it purely in terms of, is there a foul committed? Yes. Which one's first? Tavernier's pulling Bashiri's jersey before Hanlon is on his shoulders. Um, but it's understandable how it's not been given. And you're sticking with your decision on oh, I mean, the, Yes, the absolutely. Job. I mean, for I mean, look, as I said to you before, you could sit down and Sorry, watch Michael, that game. Sorry, Michael, half-time at McDermott Park, St. Johnson, nil, Aberdeen, nil. Thanks, Alan. You could sit down and watch that game over, and I guarantee you, you would be able to find, you know, a handful of incidents where there have been moments where there's been contact, there's been players touching the, the opposition, and nothing's happened. It's... It's it's not it is not a foul for me. He's not impeded him. He's not stopped him. It's but it's, that doesn't that does not deviate away from the fact and give Bashiri a free pass because it's stupidity. Well, we were spoiled rotten in that game. I have to say, <laughs> I think I misled people earlier at three o'clock. I said all the news, all the action on open all mics to come at three o'clock. Keep, keep the faith. Keep your shape. Katie. Right, I, I'm keeping my shape. There's I'm keeping fireworks my shape. coming. Then it's better to come on Open All Mics on BBC Radio Scotland. All the grounds, all the goals, all the news. This is Open All Mics from Sports Sound. From BBC Radio Scotland.
Right, so the second half's just getting underway as we heard from Alan just uh, half time there at McDermott Park. Goalless in the game there between St Johnson and Aberdeen. A couple of chances uh, for Aberdeen. Just, just to sum up, Alan went on in that first half. A couple of good moves from the Dons, they just couldn't finish them off. Yeah, Alan's up there at the moment. So, will the teams coming out at Tanner Dice? They are, uh, Kenny, yeah, they're just. Uh you know, making their way to uh, either half, just getting ready to kick off, and I'm sure, you know, some words were required by Jack Ross in particular uh, to try and uh, resolve the issues that, uh, that, that Dundee United have had in the first half. So, time will tell, but uh, it hasn't been a bad game here, you know, it hasn't been fireworks, I must say, but uh, it hasn't been a damp squid either. Squib. <laughs> 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 it hasn't been a damp squid either. Uh, so there you Squid's go. Squids would always ah, be damp. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> John Roberts, you're underway there in Dingwall? Yeah, we are. And uh, Kilmarnock of uh, Rugby Range, they've taken off Kyle Lafferty and brought on Big Ennis Cameron. So he's gone up front. To, uh, they seem to have tweaked their formation. They've, they've gone to a 4 3 3 now with me. Mackenzie and Shaw supporting Cameron here. Um, and hopefully, like everybody else, we get a little bit more action in the second half. Derek Ferguson at Fair Park, Motherwell against Livingston. What are you hoping, what are you expecting in the second half? Surely it's got to change here, Derek. Well, Kenny, I was really looking forward to this game because the two sides, you know, yep. come off, you know, coming off a brilliant wins. You know, obviously Motherwell up at Aberdeen. We didn't, well, I didn't expect them to get anything up there. So the, and you listen to Willie, Willie was there. It was uh, Motherwell put in a brilliant performance. Uh, and they've got a, there's a big crowd in here this afternoon. It is packed with Motherwell fans. They've got to give them a little bit more. And, and oh. Livingston, I always enjoy watching Livingston. But uh, they've shown absolutely nothing today. And uh, I just hope, you know, and that I can see signs, little signs of intent to get forward a little bit quicker. Uh, but there's no changes. Uh, doesn't look any kind of any changes in the. the the, the kind of the shape of both sides, but uh, but the players have got to give a little bit more. A chance for you there, Robbo? Yeah, it was actually. It was a ball played uh, deep in by Alibusi. It was headed out, and Al Power chested it down and hit a volley about a foot over the bar, but certainly much better uh, than we had in the first half. It's interesting whether really, listening to Derek talking about how disappointed he is in Motherwell because they were so good last weekend. The game you were at, Petodre, and what was particularly impressive was that when they did go ahead. They didn't sit in at the end, they kicked on and actually created several more really good chances. No, they did, and they played some nice football. Uh, you, you know, I think uh, they were always in the front foot. Uh, the, the, the goals and chances were created out with the goals as well. It could have been more than the three. And you're right, you know, they didn't sit back. It wasn't a case of just trying to shut up shop and, and deal with the scoreline that they had. You know, they continued to press forward. And, you know, it was a really impressive performance. Uh, unfortunately, as we know in football, Perhaps don't get these performances every week. I'm sure every manager would like uh, would, would like that. And Stevie Hamill obviously would have been hoping that that would be the case. But uh, as Derek's saying, he's not getting that this afternoon. Willie, no. is there any insight as to why Jamie McGrath has come off? Did that look like it was perhaps an injury, or is that a tactical change from uh, Jack Ross at uh, halftime? He's been replaced by yeah, Kujo, Kujo, is it? Yeah, yeah I, I think it is. Yeah, I mean, it looks as though Kujo's just instead of having the three up up top, um, it, it seems to be you know, pulling Tony Watt in and Kujo just playing off yeah. uh, the, the, the two strikers. So I think it is uh, a, a, a move, a tactical move, rather than any any issues with injury. I didn't notice anything, I must admit, um, you know, but I could have been wrong there. Uh, but the change has been made, and for me, it's more a tactical change than anything else. And Kujo's playing, you, you know, just off of Fletcher, really. So is Tony Watt, has he dropped back in centrally? No, they, is he playing the middle of the pitch now, Willie? Really? No, they, they, they've still got to Middleton and, and Tony Watt, but Middleton seems to be a bit deeper, yeah. and Tony Watt seems to be a bit more in, like playing as Almost a like two, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. W with one uh, Kujo coming on and just playing off. But it's a little bit early, you, you know, to say that that is a definite uh, formation change. I'll, I'll keep you updated on that, but there's no doubt that Kujo is playing, you know, just off of uh, Fletcher up front. Yeah, it's remarkable, isn't it, Leanne, just how things have changed in, in the course of such, such a short period of time for Dundee United. They're saying earlier they were raving at the performance at home to Altmar. It, 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 was, it was a full house there at Tanadise. 
they got the result, they went there. I don't think anyone made them favourites at that point, but I think we were all shocked at the level of the performance and certainly the result. And we said it's a big test of character. They go to Tynecastle last Sunday, within what a minute or so they're behind there. They lose 4 1. It's incredible just how quickly things can change in football. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly what football does to you. It brings you back down to earth really quickly. You can get ahead of yourself, a couple of good results, and you feel like you're on top of the world. And then there's a sucker punch like the, the European games for Dundee United. I think when you look at the side that they've got, they've got characters within that side. And, and I think that's perhaps the most surprising when you look through it. Guys like Tony Watt, Stephen Fletcher, um, Charlie Mulgrew in there, Ryan Edwards, they're all players with, with character and experience. They know what it's about. Then they've got the quality in, in Levitt and McGrath and players like that, Ian Hart. So it's almost surprising that they've found themselves now in this run of form. But listen, it is quickly as you can go in that downward spiral. It takes one result to change thing. It takes one moment. Uh, and Jack Ross will be hoping that his players have got that at least one moment in this second half that can spark his side into life. They, they, they need they need goals in this team, and you look you look at the, what they have: Fletcher, Watt, Middleton. On paper, you think there's plenty of goals there, but actually there isn't. Tony Watt has scored once in 24 games for Dundee United. Stephen Fletcher has four in his last 45, and one is a penalty. And Middleton is three in 40. Wow! So while we while we see them, yes, so there's a bit of an optical illusion here. We imagine that these guys can score goals, but. They're not scoring goals. But what won't be an optical illusion is come quarter to five, ten to five this afternoon, if things stay as they are, that'll be what, one point yeah. in their opening not four enough. league games. Not good enough. For a side that's had major investment. Well, I mean, you know, I'd hit, their, their wage bill is, is, is very, very chunky. Mm -hmm. And I keep going back to it, and some Dundee United fans don't like me going back to this, but they have pushed the boat out. Another chance! Mm -hmm. It's the second goal! And it's the same scorer, it's Curtis Main that finishes it with uh, his right foot. So St Mirren go 2 0 in the lead, and I'm sure you can hear in the background the home fans are not happy at, at all. Another breakaway, United had started positively on the front foot, but St Mirren hit them on the break. Get yeah, one uh, word to describe that, Willie, defensively from Dundee United, and it's soft. Yeah, they're, they're all How over you the can place let a player, well. a Ayunga, I think yeah. it is, it chops it back inside with the right foot. Nobody gets close enough to stop it. The ball shifted again. Nobody gets close enough to stop the shot. It's a brilliant finish from Curtis Main. Take nothing away from him. He whips it with the right foot into the opposite corner. And what an advantage he's given him side. I'm sure Stephen Robinson's delighted with the way his side have started this game. But rule one defending, you've got to keep the player outside. A younger, you cannot let him come back in. Whether he's going to shift the ball or he's going to take the shot himself. I'm not sure who that is that over commits. Is it Edwards actually that goes towards the ball? He just dies yeah. in a younger, just wrong foots him. Fair play to Curtis Main though, because he's a player that, that works hard at times, and, and that's how I always felt I was describing him. You know, he works hard, he's fit, he's, he causes problems, but never had an awful lot of goals to his name, and he's got two this afternoon. They had two, two chances, the two shots at it there, Dundee United, to get rid of the ball. It's a perfect you know, summation, plan. That, that word soft, just looking at so, the, ch the challenge he's going in there. Just yeah. weak, yeah. weak from two defenders. Had a chance, and fair play to Maine. That's two good finishes. That second one was particularly good Very finish. Nice. I mean, we got a change it for part. Yeah, on you uh, go, Derek. Kenny, yeah, they've, they've took off Cornelius and uh, Shields, and they've brought on Efford, and uh, it's Morris. So uh, a little change, I think it, it's certainly needed. Uh, we'll just have a little look and see if there's a little bit of change of shape as well. But, uh, you know, as I say, it's, it's been a struggle, and that's us well into the second half. I mean, this, the first half was pretty exciting. That was all down to Chick Young, because he was causing chaos, and there was a, <laughs> bit, there's a wee chance there. Van Veen just cutting in from that right-hand side, on his left foot into the box. That looked as if somebody got a touch in that. But, eh, uh, just, he just thumps it, and it's just past that left-hand post. So, yeah, maybe changes, but a life. And, and you just hear that one shot at a goal, and the fans, you know, you can just hear the atmosphere starting to change. Van Veen's in disbelief, Derek. You yeah. can't believe he's not got a corner out of that one. Leanne, did you see that way. picture there? Did you uh, see that picture? <laughs> Big Alan Burrows. He's down with the dugouts, hands in the air, <laughs> screaming for a corner. He just lives and breathes the Honestly, club, Honestly, that, that is Alan Burrows' <laughs> week, just pacing that touchline, whether it's a, a Monday or a Saturday. He's just up and down that pitch constantly. I see him from the office. 
<laughs> but it's good bit of play from Van Veen, Derek. I'm just wondering, were they two banks of four, Motherwell, in the first half? Yeah. Aye, they, they, they maybe changed to go a 4-3-3, perhaps, with yeah. those changes. You'll probably have, uh, you're better than the no than Just thinking with effort coming on, he's normally uh, plays it, off one of the, the flanks. Yeah. Maybe just looking to get a bit more um, yeah. they just support need to and service to Van Veen. Nah, they need to give this crowd... I mean, this is a big crowd that's in here, Leanne. Yeah. And they just need something to feed off. You know, and just that one shot, you just see the crowd... You know, like kind of the, the noise that came from that. So they need more of that just to get them going. Yeah, it's interesting the game there at uh, Tannadice, Willie. You know, I'd imagine the natural instinct for these players now is to to sit back and protect that lead. No, no, they're, they're not doing that. No, they're on the, the attack again, and it's another opportunity for them. A young guy on the edge of the box dances over it. Oh, it's a good save. It comes back again, Ayunga, and he's got to touch it over the bar. It gets a deflection, it goes over the bar. So the answer to that one, that question is yeah. no. I mean, they, they aren't sitting back. They haven't changed um, anything in terms of their approach to this game. Uh, St Mern, they're still, if the opportunity is there, they're taking it to, to United. And United, they're all over the place. I'm, Defensively, I'm not well, sure. they're all I'm over not the sure shot. if they're playing three or four at the back and they invariably ends up with two and one. They, they, mm -hmm. they are disjointed. They're not defending properly, and this could get very, very bad. Very, very bad. I think the Dundee United fans are just sitting there waiting for their moment. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be talking about this after uh, the game. We'll hear from Jack Ross, you know, either way over to here, but side so far just not at the races oh. at Tannadice. Tom English, it's, it, it's interesting because actually St Mirren, you know, on the back of a, of a good win last weekend, I know they were unlucky to lose to Motherwell, uh, in the opening weekend, you know, this is a, we're talking a lot about the, the Dundee United perspective this afternoon, but fair play to Stephen Robinson, he had a dreadful uh, League Cup campaign, it wasn't good when he quinned towards the end of last season, I think he probably was under a wee bit of pressure, but this has been a fantastic response. It has, yeah, this is, this is, this is a pretty weighty uh, performance they're putting in here, and uh, they're by far and away the better side, 2-0 uh, doesn't really flatter them, um, in a, in a way, a game, you know, against a team with a bigger budget and all the rest of it. Two brilliant finishes from Curtis Main. Good football, oh. but weak weakness from the other side. And St Mirren on the day are, are plenty good enough to to expose that weakness. You know why I think that the Dundee United fans also will find it difficult to to find time for Jack Ross and, and the players at this point. It's been quite consistent and there was no crisis last season at Dundee United. The manager never left in bad terms. It wasn't like the, the team was left in disarray and money's been spent to strengthen. So they've kept the core group that they had. They've added quality, mm -hmm. they've added money, um, they've added the manager in terms of his calibre and so far they've produced nothing. Yeah, I mean, really, it's, 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 it's been a hard The transformation, time. Stuart Kettlewell's with us this afternoon, Stuart, you, you'll have seen him last season, Ryan Edwards and Charlie McGrew, particularly Ryan Edwards, he won everything in the air, he was full of confidence, he was commanding, he just looks a shadow of that this afternoon, it's amazing how quickly things can change. Yeah, it is Kenny and it's, it's a tough one as well, isn't it, because they make a little change, they tweak things, um, they go into the... Uh, a really good European performance then they tweaked the game I was actually at the game when they played against Livingston they changed the back line there was two changes in there and again I think you've heard me saying this I'm such a big believer in trying to keep that continuity Willie will tell you about his experience playing at the back mm -hmm. that you want to keep that same back four or if it's a back three or a back five I just think that you want to keep the same players I understand it that they're trying to protect the likes of Charlie Mulgrew but when you've seen that clean sheet against Alba that's the back line that I really want to see for Dundee United over and over again and try and get that level of consistency and I actually think that that little tweak and that little change has maybe been the, the, the contributing factor to the goals that you're seeing them concede now. Yeah, they look as if well, they've got absolutely no confidence at all at the well, back United. They've got Charlie Mulgrew on the back, it's a poor free kick. You expect better from Mulgrew when he gets the opportunity some 25 yards out to at least get it over the wall and test the goalkeeper. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's had nothing. The performance has, have, has had nothing in it this afternoon from United. You're looking for a reaction. You're looking for, you know, the players to be playing at higher tempo with a bit more aggression and determination uh, and, and creativity because there are players out there that uh, uh, can create. But so far this afternoon, it's been so, so disappointing. And on top of recent results, then it can only add pressure to the manager. Up and running in the second half, Kenny at McDermott Park. No, no, still. Thank well, you, Alan. Well, it's somewhat surprising that there's only been one change as well, isn't there? 
you would think by this stage in the game that Jack Ross would be looking at it and doing something at least yeah. for the benefit of the, the fans that are watching go and change something maybe Niskin and bring him on see if he can give you um, certainly something off the bench maybe a change to the shape if it's not happened already it just seems very very flat I know I'm only seeing bits of it across the the stuff that's coming in on the screens but yeah it's well he has made the changes at half time you know he changed to the shape it's a wee bit baffling for me I mean it's the, 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 you know the, there is plenty Tangerine jerseys going forward, but y you can have that in a game and it doesn't have any impact. And mm -hmm. that's what uh, that, that, that's where United are just now. And they're leaving themselves so short at the back as well that every time St. Murn go up the park, they look as though they're going to create an opportunity for themselves. So, yeah, make changes, but y you know, be disciplined as well. And I think the, the, the amount of goals that they've conceded, the last thing they want to hear is another three or four goals against them. Um, and it's looking as though it could go that way, Leanne. Definitely looking that way. But yeah, I'm sure he will be th contemplating changes. He has changed the shape a little bit. He's been encouraging his players to get forward. But then again, that is leaving a very shaky defence wide open. So half time scores, uh, sorry, second half scores in the top flight. Dundee United nil, St Mirren to a double from Curtis Main. Motherwell nil, Livingston nil, Ross County nil, Kilmarnock nil, and the delayed starts in Johnson nil, Aberdeen nil, just underway there in the second half. In the Championship are both nil, Queen's Park one. It's now Cove Rangers nil, Air United one, Hamilton Ackies nil, Wraith Rovers one, and Morton nil, Dundee nil. Into League uh, 1 now and the score Airdrie 1, Alloa 0 FC Edinburgh 0, it's now Falkirk 2, Kelty Hearts 0 Dunfermline 0, Montrose 2, Clyde 1, Peterhead 1 Queen of the South 2 and oh, into League 2, Leanne, yeah chance. This could be one for you here Leanne, he's taking his time David Monroe, oh I tell you what this is another borderline red oh, <laughs> oh it's a shocker yes it's a uh. Is that we'll an get, orange? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get a look at it again, John, oh, but certainly two players coming what. together with a lot of speed as well. Yeah, and, and, and McEnroy just got there in front of him. That was the thing, but it was it was high. It was high from Baldwin, and I think he's... Uh, yeah, Baldwin uh, steps out for the back line. And watch it, though, uh, he lunges at him. No, I think it's a yellow, if I'm being honest. Yep. I think he tries to get through the ball. Both players almost coming together in a 50-50 motion. Baldwin perhaps just lose his control ever so slightly as he follows through but I think yellow's the right decision John I think the thing here is as well I, I, you know, with, I know Wally calling the referees for a fair bit of stick there but what I liked about David Monroe again he didn't he didn't doesn't he doesn't he reach for his take the sting out at John he just, just, he just sat at, he just listened five I think he, to ten seconds yep, just, just let absolutely he just took his took a time took a breath and that's over the years if that's one thing Wally, Wally tends to have his cards out as he's running across to make decisions, whereas again, David Rullo had a good long, hard look at that, certainly spoke to through the, the intercoms to his officials there and then decided it was just a yellow. The and Leanne, there has been changes yep. made, uh, you know, for United and uh, Niskanen has come on and, and Nicky Clark as well and B. Hitch and Watt been taken off, so... You know, the changes uh, have been wrong. We've just got to wait and see if it's going to make any difference. Yeah, I think at this stage of the game, you need to do something. You need to go and try and get a goal. Certainly, Nicky Clark will, will do that for you at times. Niskanen um, always puts a shift in in the middle of the pitch as well. Gives you that middle to front movement. Just something that perhaps would have St Mirren going, OK, this is different. We might need to adapt, you know, because as it is just now, they're controlling the, the entirety of the game. Uh, the latest scores in League 2, Annan 1, Stirling 0, Bonnie the Groves 0, Albion Rovers 1, East Fife 0, Forfar 0, Elgin City 2, Stranraer 2, Stennis Muir 0, Dumbarton 2 and in England, Crystal Palace 2, Aston Villa 1, Everton 0, Nottingham Forest 0, Fulham 2, Brentford 1, Leicester City 1, Southampton 0. Who's on top in the early stages in your game, Alan, uh, there at McDermott Park? It's very, very tight. Kenny, we've only been gone five minutes in the second half, nothing really in it. Aberdeen started the first half really well, three chances of notes and Johnson not really in it. But then the Saints grew into the game and they had the better of the second part of the first half. Um, and it's a, it's a tight match, really is. You know, I expected more from Aberdeen, having listened about them early on in the season. They have got power and pace, good players in the forward areas, but not really creating anything in the second half. It's still nil now with 51 minutes on the clock. Any improvement at Fir Park, Derek? Yeah, Motherwell were better uh, with the changes. 
with effort and Morris just playing off a of Van Veen and certainly getting forward a little bit more intensity and pace into their playing one telling thing O'Donnell just chased a ball down 30 40 yards and they get a, a standing uh, ovation for it and that's what there's a wee deflection and it was just effort there getting in there right foot shot 22 yards out I thought it was going in but of the deflection but it's a corner kick but yeah certainly they're starting to get the crowd going Mullow starting to get themselves forward shots at goal so uh, looking a little bit better now Kenny thank goodness for that uh, Stuart Kettlewell Morton against Dundee I mean Dundee have been a decent start the season lost an opening day to Partick Thistle but you were expecting perhaps some goals here this afternoon yeah, I was, Kenny, and there's been some decent chances, uh, but the better of the chances in the second half have fell to Morton. Um, just over the last five minutes, Dundee oh, having more possession of the ball. a penalty! Get a penalty for Motherwell. It's Spittle, corner kick, right at the back post. I think it's that, I think it, it might be Lamy. It claims it? for a handball, maybe? Yeah, it claims for a handball. The referee takes an eternity. He's sorry about it. No, you're talking about, we're talking about what I call him, you know, being a bit rash and just going and giving the decision. And you know, on the referee, you know, he took his time, it's Nick Walsh, you know, it's four, five, oh. six seconds, then he decides penalty kick, but he must have, I think the linesman's got involved there, he's heard something in his ear. I but think it comes off his stomach. Well, his it, it, arm's certainly it, outstretched, isn't it? Yeah, it's but he's, he's so, running over, Nick Walsh Montan is running over. Yeah, it's Montano, that we, he's almost it, on the... On, on the, the byline, he's just yep. in line with the post. The bot, he's almost looked as if he's trying to usher it out of play. It does take a nick off him, but from the angle that we are seeing, it does look like it's come off his side. That's what he's indicating. He's isn't indicating that, that as side. well. Yeah. Um, so even if a referee one. takes his time, then he can get it wrong <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, but, but I think the linesman has got we involved. We prefer it that way, Willie. That's what's more important. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. important bit. So it's Van Veen anyway. He's got the ball on the spot. He's got hands oh. and hips just now. He's running up, right footed. Oh, and he just, just punts it into the back of the net. Mother will go 1 0 up. It's Aberdeen's best chance of the match so far. It's from Clarkson. The shot he cuts inside and he just tries to reverse it back into the bottom corner. Just wide of the target. Good effort. Oh, come on, Robert! Can you bring us anything? Yes, listen, it's been a much better game second yeah. half, and it's role reversal. Derek McKinnis brought on Ennis Cameron at half time for Kyle Lafferty, and he's made a huge difference. Uh, they've gone to a sort of 4 3 3 um, power volley just over, and then Shaw had a header over, and then a, a header well saved by Laidlaw. And to counteract that, Malcolm McCann made two changes. Omura and White have come on uh, for Sims and Huala, and that was just it there. Um, who, uh, down the right, Uara whipped in a great ball and Jordan White, the other sub, got his head at the end of it so it's certainly livened up again here and someone just might nick it Well, we'll certainly take that, that's for sure um, do, you, do you think Lafferty was, was tactical? Do you think he was a bit concerned? He, he did get involved, he got yellow carded John in the first half, got involved in a few things I think that was just Derek McInnes using his experience there It's hard to say, it's, yeah. he, did, he did get involved with the, the yellow card, there was, there was words afterwards but nothing Nothing that you'd think that he was getting wound up about. Mm -hmm. I think it's just purely tactical. He's brought in his camera in, and his camera's really put himself about, uh, held the ball up well, brought other people into play. And as I said, the changes that Malky Mackay's now made seem to have given County a wee booster as well, because they're now in the front foot, and they've actually just forced their first corner of the match. Let's get back into the Championship. Gayfield are both against Queen's Park. Ali Defoy. Yeah, both sides came out of the traps end to end again. Uh, a chance for the visitors with Williamson forcing Gaston into another save. 51 minutes in, Scott Stewart, which is Owen Coyle's assistant oh. son. If you can work that one out. Um, he had a, a header, it went just wide. Queen's Park creating slightly more opportunities at the, the start, but you would say of this half, um, as you say, playing into the wind isn't really affecting them too much. But our boss Bobby Lynn, he's, he's really come on fire in this second half. Took a shot in the 60th minute, which was just too much underneath it and over the bar. Um, wind assisted, as you probably say. Looked like Bobby Lynn again, just knocked out there, um, but they didn't manage to make anything of the corner. So the visitors are trying their best to increase that one goal lead and are both now starting to show a bit of confidence. Our both fans got the drums out and uh, they're doing their best to encourage the players with just shy of about 100 visiting supports, hope, supporters hoping to go down the road with all three points. We shall see, but end to end here and really exciting. It's our both nil Queens Park 1. What's our reaction, Willie Miller from Dundee United? Oh, oh. what a goal that is! Wow! Clarsen with a, a goal of the season candidates, a free kick, you're talking 32, 33 yards out, and he has whipped it, put that right in the top bag. What a free kick that is! Wow! That's two he's got then. 
Yeah, we're just waiting to see it again, Alan. Certainly the description sounds perfect. I just glanced up as it, it rustled in the back of the net. What a hit! Here we He's go. been class. He's been oh, different wow. class. Wow, some Ah, uh, it's perfect. Absolutely inch perfect. Whips it over the wall, didn't he? The pace and the ball, the whip and the ball. That's a delight. If you say goal of the season contender. What a hit that is. Yeah, so they're ahead there. What's the reaction from United Willie Miller at Tannadice? <laughs> <laughs> a negative one. <laughs> it's still all about St Mirren. Ayunga's uh, leading them a merry dance, uh, the defenders, uh, to be perfectly honest. He's big, he's physical, he's strong. He's quite quick too, and he's got a trick or two. And they just can't cope with him. No, the, the, the home fans, you know, will not be happy. They are not happy, you know, a section of them uh, doing as uh, a little bit earlier. And rightly so, because... United, although they've made the changes and brought on substitutes and changed for nation, they've not made an impact in this game whatsoever. It's all about St Mirren. Yeah, Tom English uh, at five o'clock will give us his three takeaways uh, from the day. I just suspect that the United may feature in their summer job. Uh, uh, yes, well done. Well done, Sherlock Holmes. You, you've cracked the code. Really? <laughs> it's re <laughs> it is. Dundee United will unquestionably be one of the three. Interesting isn't Jack Ross post-match today. I have just seen yeah. that Richardson free kick yeah. from behind the goals. What a free kick that is. Magnificent. Yeah, as, 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 as Liam was saying, Alex, the power I hit the net uh, was a, a beautiful strike. Quite People a short run no up he takes as well. Would you would you like to be doing that Jack Ross interview post match, Kenny? Um, you were there in your previous life. I had well, I had a previous one with him, and yeah, yeah. it was a semi final at Hamden. We we, we didn't particularly get on that night. Uh, this is going to be a difficult one. This, this Gab Wallace is here today. Did a great job uh, with the pre match interview, and they're not easy. No. I know you're sitting in the stand there and you know what's coming, it's difficult, you try to think of your questions, you try to think how you respond to his answers, how much you push, because you know, they're, they're raw. <laughs> yep. Brilliant! It's Queen's Park are increasing their lead. Uh, let me just check, was it Grant Savory that got that one? Grant Savory passed it to Williamson, took a beautiful shot, keeper could not get to it at all, beautiful pass, lovely ball, and you can see all of the Queen's Park fans absolutely buzzing, just shy of 100 of them over the moon, they've increased their lead, it is our broth nil, Queen's Park 2. Yeah, it's quite interesting, Alan, speaking about Jack Ross, because in a couple of these interviews he's spoken about his players a lot. You know, it's how many times you can do that as a manager when you go through a bad spell? Yeah, it's, it's, I think he's got to try and encourage them as much as he can. You know, he's, he's very new into the job. I'm surprised Nicky Clark's play, not playing as much as he should because I think over the period he's always led the line well for Dundee United. It's a tough period for Jack, you know, and he's he's been there before, whatever club he's been at, and he has to get it right. It's, it's going to be very difficult. He needs everyone to to be together with them if he can supporters won't be happy after last year I thought the job that Tam Court's done under the circumstances was magnificent um, but has he got out at the right time because looking at that Dundee United side have the legs gone of Edwards and Mulgrew Jack will hope not but you know, it's looking very grim for him at the moment it's a good point Alan actually when you go back to Nicky Clark as well because he, oh, he was a mainstay almost wasn't he last season in the side um, I think what you see is what you get with him but is it a case maybe that Jack Ross has brought in the likes of Stephen Fletcher and feels under pressure to keep him on the pitch even at times when he's not giving him too much exactly and that's it you know you, you feel you know can you keep going with the ones you've got you've got to give some of the other boys a chance I, I just don't think he knows his best starting 11 at the moment and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really tough times for Dundee United especially after last year United fans were flying they fell in love with the club again with a good result in the first leg in Europe and then the wheels have just fell off. Yeah, it's just, I think maybe, it, it, it's, it'd be good to see, have a look at the age profile of the starting lineup. It's it's a mixture, but certainly up front oh! with, with, with Fletcher and Watt. Yes. Watt's not that old, but Watt's not contributing on the goal side. Fletcher got it, gets a penalty, but his goal scoring record is, is really, really poor over the last number of seasons. So is, his, so is Watt. So, see, me, see me think back on it, Tom, as well. You know, the fact that Tam Court's left just seemed strange. Yeah. The timing of it. Well, I mean, uh, well, did he not... think he could have taken the club as far as... I mean, look at the investment Jack Ross has had. Presumably, you know, Tam Courts would have had that. Well, do you know what, do you know what, 
confused me then and still confuses me now about the whole Tam Courts thing. He was a guy who did to, did well with Dundee United last season. Yep. Uh, gets him to fourth in the league. His stock is on the rise. Um, the, we know there's a couple of clubs inquiring about him. And then there's this announcement from Tanadice that the, the, his contract has been uh, mutually terminated. Uh, why? When you, as a club, when you, when you know that there are other clubs who are possibly interested in taking him and you might get some compensation, why would you agree to terminate his contract, thereby, on the face of it, not getting any compensation? I'd, lo- I'd love Dundee United to answer some of these questions, and I'll certainly be on to them very soon about this, but it just seemed, the whole thing it seemed a bit odd. It doesn't a logical odd. explanation, does it, I mean, it, it was strange, the circumstances which Tam uh, Courts led, wasn't it? It was strange, um, and then looking at it, and I agree with Tom, you know, it was a strange one, but they maybe think that Jack was out of job, and, you know, Jack has, has done a good job at the clubs he's been at, he's maybe let himself down a little bit in big matches when it comes to finals and things like that. But you look at what he done to Rangers and uh, when Martin Boyle scores his hat trick, he can produce in big games. And maybe that's what Tony Ashker and Dundee United have seen. Sorry. Sorry to jump in, Alan, but I've yeah. just seen Nick Walsh flash a red card in the yeah. screen. Yeah, Leanne, it's uh, the substitute. Uh, I'm struggling to pronounce his name, to be honest with you. It's uh, Bahambula. Yeah. Uh, he's picked up. I was actually that talking a challenge, to then? Yeah, about, yeah I, I, do you know something, Len? I took Is my eye off the ball because one of the other reporters was asking me about the penalty kick. They were yeah. a bit unsure who handled it. So I was referring to your good self that you says uh, you weren't sure to come off, uh, obviously, uh, Montano off his body or off his hand. But yeah, Bambula, he made a rash challenge. Uh, the stand side. And, uh, you know, he's obviously trying to get him self about prove a point but he's is it a he's second, second yellow, yellow is second it right because I'm looking at that and I'm going that for me is not no, a red card no it's a second um, yellow it's yeah, one stand side uh, okay. just about five oh. six minutes big ago. chance there for United uh, they, they, they should have got one back Niskanen it was the ball fortuitously fell to him just oh, uh, on the chance. edge of the box and he hasn't reacted quick enough to it I don't think and it's been a rather weak type of finish it's a good save you know to the right hand side Carson's right hand side but at the same time it's a big chance Leon. yeah he's got to do better will he absolutely yeah. he's got yeah. to do better plenty of time ball sits up well from he goes comfortably goes safe is the word that Derek used earlier on at Fur Park goes safe with inside of the boot just go and wrap you know go and wrap your foot around it go and get power behind it a bit of conviction um, right down the throat of Carson that's an easy stop in the end both sides badly on, yeah on you go Alec it's, uh, it's for the home side. We're all working between us to try and work out who it was. It was a bit of a pinball. Um, the Queen's Park keeper feels that he had a foul, so he was trying to get it uh, crossed off, but it looks like it's still standing. The, key, the referee has given it. It is our broth one, Queen's Park two. Game on. Yeah, they're right back in it. John Robertson, both these sides desperately need of their first win of the season. Does anyone look the more, the more likely at the moment? In the second half, I'd say Kilmarnock looked more likely. It's been a role reversal. County were slightly slicker, slightly tidier in the opposition half of the first half, as I said, with, with the three chances that were all tame saves for Walker. Second half, it's definitely come out. The, the change of tactics and personnel by Derek McInnes bringing in his camera on has certainly made a difference. As I say, Powers went close, Shaw's went close twice. Uh, neither team's done enough to win it at the moment. You know, I'm still... You know, still 13 minutes or so to go. You're looking for that big chance of the game to come. It hasn't come just yet. They've all been kind of half chances, not even half chances, if I'm being honest. But you still live in hope that somebody can produce something uh, to try and finally break this still, mate. So the score lines, what, with about 10, 15 minutes or so left to play, although more than that in the game at McDermott Park. So running through the scores, Dundee United 0, St Mirren 2, Motherwell 1, Livingston 0, Livy down to 10 men, Ross County 0, Kilmarnock 0, St Johnson 0, Aberdeen 1 into the Scottish Championship. Our both 1, Queen's Park 2, Cove Rangers 0, Air United 2, Hamilton Ackies 0, Wraith Rovers 2 and Morton 0, Dundee 0. Into League 1 we go, Airdrionians 1, 
Alloa nil, FC Edinburgh nil, Falkirk two, Kelty Hearts nil, Dunfermline nil, Montrose two, Clyde one, Peterhead one, Queen of the South three, and into League Two we have Albi sorry Annan one, Stirling Albion two, Bonnery Groves nil, Albion Rovers one, East Fife nil, Forfar nil, Elgin City two, Stranraer two, and Stenhouse Muir one, Dumbarton two and into the top flight down in England. Crystal Palace now 3-1 up at home to Aston Villa. Everton nil, Nottingham Forest nil, Fulham 2, Brentford 2, and it's Leicester City 1, Southampton 1. So, any sign... Chance for Aberdeen! Yep. Great save! Yep. What a save! It's still in there. That was what you would call a smash in the box. Back to McCrory! Oh, oh, just over oh, the bar. Oh, that's a bad one. That's a bad one. Good Joe. Well, it's only a yellow card, but in my book, oh. he's late. Gallagher's up. He's very late. Gallagher's not hurt, thankfully. Um, but a yellow card. But, you know, if, uh, if you're going to be brandishing red cards, you know, someone comes into you out of control, totally nowhere near the ball, and actually catches the player. There's a lot of intent there, I think. Unfortunately for uh, Gallagher, he, he obviously hasn't caught him. He's caught him, but not badly enough uh, to cause an injury, but the intent was certainly there. Yeah, he just nicks him, Willie. It's the speed that he arrives at. I, I can understand what you're saying. I think yeah. yellow's a, the right decision. He, he doesn't leave the ground or anything. It's almost that kind of block tackle that he I comes down. I think there could be a red card here as well. I think Callahan has handled the ball. He's getting a second yellow, and Ross Callahan has been sent off after 80 minutes. County are down to 10 men. That's a silly one from Callahan, isn't it? Yeah, very, <laughs> very silly. You see his reaction when he's on the deck. Johnny just looks up. Just grabs the and ball. And then drops his head back into the ground. <laughs> I have no idea what he's thinking. It's a tough start to the season, Alan, for Malcolm Mackay's side. You were there in the opening yeah. day at Tynecastle. In that first half, they were outstanding. They were brilliant. They were excellent. And I thought they'll be fine. You know, we were on the left. They had a lot of power and pace up front. It's been a tough, really tough start for them. They need to get something on the, on the board if they can. You know, that's not going to help with Callahan getting sent off, and not for the first time in his career either. Livingston up against it there at Fir Park, Derek one goal down, a man down, any Hello, sign of life doing? from Davy Martindale's side? Yeah, he's, he's made a, a couple of changes, uh, well, one other change, uh, Mullen has, has come on to the, onto the park, but uh, it just shows you, Kenny, uh, crazy, that there was nothing in the first half, you could tell my reaction, I was so disappointed, second half, Bothable. Well, the man manager made a couple of changes, brought on a couple of players. Effort Morris made a change. They were getting forward. They won that controversial penalty kick. See, here we go. Here we off. go again, Leon. Right in the first half, Ross County's uh, winger Olagba stopped a free kick twice, and he got a warning from David Munro. Mm -hmm. Satana's just done the same thing, and he gets booked. Yeah. You, you talk about this consistency aspect of it. Is it's it's really poor at times. It's stuff like that as well. I think yeah. the, the petulance of stopping a free kick generally yeah, but, uh, does he's, normally he's get you warmed, put in the book straight away, doesn't it? He me twice in the first yeah. half. Oh. Twice. And let him away with it. And yeah, that's the first time Satana does it, and yet he picks up a yellow card. It's just, it's, that's what drives coaches mad. Now, Absolutely. Don't Adds get me the wrong. the frustration of the fans as don't well. Don't get me wrong. I think both should have been yellow carded because if they are trying to stop a quick free kick, then absolutely the referee's right. But to warn a player twice and then to give another one right away, it just. It's just so frustrating. Do you know what's an absolute rubbish job in football? <laughs> the one that lies behind the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Wally, I could never see you doing that. <laughs> Wally, yeah? What's the chances you want, like, <laughs> Fergie well, telling well, well, you lie behind the wall? I think I would have quite enjoyed that. Who's Alan? Alan, I thought you were having, you to, go at, having to go at me there for a second. The worst job. <laughs> 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 the hardest part for me would be getting back up. <laughs> <laughs> The worst That's one I seen, Alan, was when Messi was the player that was on the floor behind the wall. Imagine Ridiculous. That. <laughs> Isn't that asking him <laughs> no, I mean, that? It's, it's, come, it's just new in the game, <laughs> Not really. Not that it was a pecking order in football, but seriously, if Messi's your guy that's on the floor behind the wall, football is done. Can you I'll see, see, can you see the benefit what? at all to it? You can, because walls jump. Right. And they all jump together. So, And a lot of players are getting very clever now when they can hit the ball under the wall, so that's why they do it. Biscuits are totally the worst one. When you had to be the charger. Oh, he charged a free murder. kick. Oh, <laughs> that was terrible. Get the ball in the face. And That's everyone. it. Yeah, my. Oh, did they fancy that myself? <laughs> who who, who, who the most powerful the shot then? Who is who is the one you, you did not want to be charging out against? Oh. Alberts. George Alberts. Oh, that's a good shout, yeah. Ah, he could hit them, couldn't he? 
There's a few players in the modern day game, Derek, though, that could get back to charging the ball and actually take one for the team. <laughs> when you see some of the defence, seriously, players jumping out the way, turning their well, back, on it, the road, oh, that, that, does does in. Uh -huh. that, that does your not in. Goldson, you Goldson and Jack today both duck. Um, take no, take right. nothing away from the strike, by the way, which is nonchalant in terms of the finish uh, from Campbell. But both players, neither of them, determined to get in front of the ball and stop the ball. Right, I didn't. I, um, well, obviously, I've not. No, I've not saw that, but it just shows you. I tell you what, the players will get after them because if you see mm -hmm. that and you're, yep. you're turning your back away, that's that's a that's a no no. Do they get after them in the modern game, though, Derek? Fergie, you oh. didn't have, you didn't have the face for a charger. <laughs> uh, uh, you're, you're, you're too good. I'm actually <laughs> good looking boy. Looking. You're a good looking lad. Obviously, you need to go to spec savers then, John. No, Fergie. No, at all. Well, as, as a player, if you're a Dundee United player this afternoon and this result stays as it is. You get into captain or no captain. You get into that dressing room after the game. What are you saying? What are you doing? Well, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to get over. I don't know if the modern day player actually has a voice in the dressing room, or they certainly don't seem to have a voice on the pitch. Um, I don't see it anyway. When I watch games, you very rarely see a, 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 a player having a go at a teammate or, or trying to even, perhaps even sort things out on the field of play when things aren't going well in the dressing room I think it would be the same as well oh. uh, but you know if there's anybody that's uh, been involved in the game recently that can you know confirm that or not it would be good to hear um, but it's, it's just such a depressing performance yeah they've, they've thrown you know players forward in the second half but you've got to do that you're 2-0 down you're at home your fans are not Chance happy. Chance for County goal! The 10 men have grabbed the goal! And it's Awura. It was a long free kick played in. Jordan White got the initial header down. It looked as if it had come off somebody's hand. They all stopped waiting for it to be for apparently to be given. David Monroe played on. And it was Awura who grabbed the ball, slipped it under Walker. It's 1-0 Ross County. Tell you what, John, that first ball that's come into the box, it's come down with snow on it. Ah, so I can't believe Walker <laughs> didn't come for it. I'm, I'm looking at the length of time that it spins in the air. Yeah, yeah. The amount of time that it travels. Walker's a big lad, he's about 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Doesn't yep. come, and I don't know if there couple is a hand ball, but it's heading down. Couple of knock-ons. Yep, and Awura was the one who was alive, and he rattled it in. Yeah, White does really well, he wins the first header. I think Ash Taylor actually wins the second one, but puts it back into the danger area. Yeah, it took them ten games to get their first three points uh, last season. They could be off the mark this afternoon at home to come on, and they are down to ten men. Malky Mackay side, real celebrations from the home fans there behind that goal. What about the game at Wedemer Park? Alan still got a fair way to go there. Any sign of St Johnson getting back into this? No, and it's gone from bad to worse. Murray Davison just come on as a substitute, and he's gone into a challenge, and he's down, holding his ankle. Murray is not one to lie down if it's not serious stuff it could be a nightmare he's had some real terrible injury problems over the period Aberdeen have been really good in the second half a wonderful goal by Richardson 52 minutes smashing it in the top corner since then they've had a few chances McCrory's had a couple of efforts just over the top of the bar Richardson again with another effort just wide Aberdeen deserve to be ahead St Johnson a lot to do everyone's now coming over to take uh, some fluids on board because Murray Davison is in a fair bit of pain on that pitch. Hopefully he's okay. He's not moved, Alan. He looks an awful lot of pain. The man down here as well. I think Johnson's took a heavy challenge from Donnelly, who was also yellow carded. Um, but that's that's the two substitutes. I said that Cameron made a big difference coming on for Kamara, but White and Awura have done the same for County, and it's the, those two that have combined to get them as vital lead with just four minutes left. It's been a feisty old game there, Robbo, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. I, I think, you know, it, also, it, it wasn't really up until the, the tackle from Callahan. Yeah. And then that really sort of kind of sparked things off and it got a bit heated. And they say Derek McInnes changed it around to start the second half, went 4 3 3 with Innes Cameron through the middle, and they were, they've been much the better side second half. Um, I mean, it's been an even game, as I say. County edge the first, Kilmarnock have definitely edged the second. And then, as we've seen before, County just went. 4-4-1 four, four, uh, when the, the red card came and but they've got the reward for it. Alan, it was it was Clarkson who got that free kick, wasn't it for Aberdeen? Clarkson number twenty. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I think you might have said Richardson. Sorry, there. Clapson, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some goal, was it? The Brilliant goal. The ball hit the back of the net. It was an absolute stunner. You, you confused me there for a second. Sorry. <laughs> any, any, any sign of Libby getting back? Doesn't take much to confuse me. <laughs> any sign? I mean, they're down to 10 men. They're up against it there at Fir Park, Derek. Not really, to be honest with you. Uh, I think Motherwell controlled the game. Uh, with the, that extra man certainly in the middle of the park I think it was a change that uh, uh, the manager the mother manager Hamill made at 55 minutes bringing effort and uh, Morris onto the park and just a, that little change of shape uh, just that getting the two in support of Van Veen it, it made a difference and they started to get a lot of pressure but uh, and seeing the, the you know Baham Buller who had come on to the park he's on the park uh, Kenny for 12 minutes yep. and two yellow cards so he's not helped his teammates out I, I can see what he was trying to do he was trying to put himself about but uh, but certainly you can't do that in that fashion but uh, no Olivia don't look as if they're going to get back into this and Van Veen was just named man of the match so that's uh, big uh, crowd here at Fir Park certainly enjoying the latter stages of this game Clarkson's just gone off the goal scorer for Aberdeen to be replaced um, he has gone off and, and Morris has come on and Luis Lopez has come on as well for Basawan has also gone off and Murray Davison thankfully is back on his feet and back on the pitch four, yeah, that's good four to minutes hear. of injury time in Dingwall four minutes for Derek McInnes' side to get back into things there let's get back into the championship Morton against indeed indeed the title favourites at the start of the season Stuart have they, have they looked at on today's performance? Definitely not, Kenny. Just as you come to me, Morton almost won it. It was a, a long throw. Straps came onto the pitch. He's got that long throw, hurls it into the 18 yard box. Uh, and it was Jack Beard that gets up, flicks it on, hits the base of the post. It looked for all the world it was going to go in the goal. Um, but Morton have had the better of the opportunity. Second half, Dundee had possession, but seriously lacked conviction when they get into the final third. So it looks as if it may fizzle out as a 0 0, but Morton with the better chances. That was some result for part of Thistle last night. McCall was insufferable, wasn't he? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> deliberate. I'm just waiting for my phone to start pinging. Oh, my goodness. Inviting me to watch some proper football. <laughs> man that's it, not shy. I mean, if you look at the pitch last night, the series, it just looked absolutely fantastic. It did, it did yeah. It did. What a difference. Yeah. They were brilliant in the first half, Kenny. Weren't they really Tiffany, good last night? Yeah. I, love, I love watching Tiffany. He was good brilliant, wasn't he? He looks oh. a real character, doesn't he? Again, what you see is what you get. He seemed, not, he seemed confused at the end, didn't he, though, when he was handing out the player of the match award to oh, Ryan Gray? Oh, like, why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> why have I brought into this? Do you know what I love about football managers is the passion there. I'm watching the pictures last year, of course, were there. Yeah. It was the disappointment at the end. And Ian McCollin is having a go at his central defender. Wasn't he walking off the park, losing that late goal? Oh, oh, oh it's oh. the third one. It's the third oh. one uh, for. It's Alec Grieve who's come on as a substitute. It's the third one for uh, St Mirren. And you can hear in the background. Where is Ericsson going, Willie? Really? Oh, I don't know. Where he, is he, he He's going? out on a walkabout, isn't he? Oh, wow. I mean, he's it's brilliant counter-attack and play, but the goalkeeper is in no man's land. He's made his decision for him. He slipped the ball by him. It's into the back of the net. And it's a horrible day for Jack Ross. Corner, come on. Up. Another one. Brilliant goal though again, Stephen Robinson. And he's the trying keepers to play up. It cool. <laughs> the keepers up, Robert. Going for it. Yeah, six foot five, six foot six. Sam Walker's up in the middle of the goal. It's a poor delivery. He's come straight back to him again. Oh, can Armstrong do better? The keeper's staying up. County have got everybody back. Oh! Oh, it was nearly a goal from Armstrong there. He smashed the ball goalward. I think he was trying to whip it in. He smashed the goal somehow. Ross Laidlaw managed to claw it away. It's another corner. That looks a decent save, actually. It was going at the top corner, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. some whip on it and the ball moves. Aye, it's, I say it, it looked like he tried to whip it across, but nearly caught out Ross Laidlaw, but Kelly stayed up. Sam Walker has stayed up. He's at the edge of the box. He's making his way back, but here's in his camera a shot. Oh, it's cleared. Willie, are there still Dundee Night fans left here to, to tell their, show their side what they think of them this afternoon? Very, very few. They're still uh, making their way out. Uh, there's streams of them coming down. Uh, both stands uh, uh, as I'm sitting watching them well some are going up to go out and the other ones are coming down yeah. to go out but it's one way traffic and they're all heading back home goalkeeping <laughs> problems with Xander Clark still reading Callum Davis and saying Stone got a club would he, would, he not, would he not be one for United Alan oh, it was spoken about wasn't it I would have thought so I certainly give would have give him that oh motherful they've got bodies forward they've taken an eternity there's effort Morris Van Veen there's another shot getting in there's oh, 
and it's Goss just puts it past the post. Oh, they were pretty wasteful there. They could have just had the game. Well, it's pretty much done and dusted, but uh, so unlucky not to get their second there. Uh, am I aware, Will? Full time here at Gayfield, our both one Queen's Park two. Thanks, Ali. It's important, Will, as well, to pay credit to St Mirren. Very, we've seen Absolutely. the celebrations coming. They've been very good this afternoon, haven't they? Oh, they've been great. You know, been singing their praises all afternoon, Absolutely, Kenny. Yeah. You know, it's been a really strong performance from them. Uh, you know, they've had aggression, they've been well organised, uh, they've taken their chances. Uh, they haven't created too many opportunities or chances other than their three goals, but they're well worthy of the victory this afternoon. Final whistle for part, Motherwell 1, Livingston 0. Yeah, back to back wins for the new manager, Stevie Hamill. He's spoken this week about potentially adding Robert Snodgrass to his side. What a signing that would be for Motherwell. Very impressive for the new manager, certainly last week at Petaudry and following Phil that up. Dingwell, 1 0. County. It took them 10 games last season to get off the mark, but they have done it this afternoon. They were down to 10 men. That's a big, big win, isn't it, Tom? It's, it is a massive. Takes a bit of takes a bit of pressure off them. Uh, takes a bit of pressure off Malcolm McKay. It's amazing the similarities at the start of last season. This season, Malcolm McKay will be very happy if he's a repeat of last season. This is this is so. Maybe this is the this is the one they win. The one they need. Get a bit of traction there. Full time at Capo, Morton nil, Dundee nil. Thank you, Stuart. What about uh, the home side then at McDermott Park? Unfortunately, how long have you got to play there? We've still got just under 10 minutes still to go here. It's still 1 0 to Aberdeen. St Johnson may have a bit of a fist of it if they can, but Aberdeen still lively on the break. Johnny Full Hayes time. is rolling back the years. Thanks, Willie. Do, Full do you... time at Tanner Dice. Yeah. Thank you, Willie. Yeah, plenty more reaction to come to that game. Uh, is it the same old problem for St John's that they had can't last score. season? Yeah, yeah can't, can't score. score. The goals. Stevie May is now on. Bear has gone. Bear's a big lad. Puts himself about. Doesn't look a natural finisher. Had a chance in the first half. Swiped out with his left foot. Missed the ball completely. And missing Hendry, who scored the goals that kept them up last year. He's obviously moved on to Salford. It's the same old problems. You know, they, they can't score goals. But the fact this isn't new. This is what St Johnson have had for since Tommy Wright was here and probably before that. You need someone that's going to get you 10, 12, 15 goals if you can. And they don't seem to have it. Liam Craig was one that would maybe get in double figures. Dave Mackay when he played. I think Henry got 10 last year or 11, whatever it was, to keep them up. But they've just struggled. Struggled to create chances. Struggled to score goals. Speaking about uh, Scottish goal scorers, um, uh, Shea Adams comes off the bench for Southampton when Leicester are winning 1-0. Uh, scores two goals in 16 minutes and Southampton win 2-1. Well, that's that, him not going to Everton then. So that's... <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so that's... Uh, so that's good. That's good news for Scotland. Just out uh, out of our goldfish ball here. Absolutely, we'll definitely take. I mean, Callum Henry's he's going to be a hard man to replace there. Clearly, isn't it? He really found his form towards the end of the season, Alan. He did. He, he was excellent. Considering he was out at Kilmarnock on loan as well for a period, um, done very very well, and got his move down to, down to England, where he gets you know, probably double his wages, if not more, down at, for Salford. This is a serious. He's a run. A great run by Murphy. St Johnson, what a save that is! Again, brilliant goalkeeping by Roos. Wonderful run by Murphy, beats three or four men on his left foot. Hits the shot across the keeper, brilliant save by the goalie. Yeah, it's a strong arm, isn't it, Alan? Brilliant run, as you say, from Murphy, shifts it again. Takes a shot with the left, and the goalkeeper does well, though he puts it back into a danger area, but luckily for him, there was nobody there to tap at home. And here's another one that I think's let himself down. It's not let himself down, just not been good enough. O'Halloran's come on. For St Johnson, he was brilliant his first period here. Got his move, not the same player. He kind of flatters to deceive, I think. He's got great pace, he looks very, very dangerous, but there's not an awful lot of end product a lot of the time with Michael Hallam, that's for sure. So we will run through the full-time scores and Tom Ingers will tell us very, very soon his big three takeaways from this afternoon's action right here on BBC Radio Scotland. <laughs> 